and welcome. I am Dr. Sparks, and this is The Martian Explorations. Let's go ahead and get right to it. I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a jetpack and some fuel, because we're going up high, high in the sky. Come on up for a ride with your good friends at your side. Imagination is your guide, because it's Dr. Sparks, side story typewriting time. Hello everyone and welcome. I am Dr. Sparks and this is the Martian Explorations. We have traveled today all the way to the red planet, to the surface of Mars. And I'm joined today by three heroes. We've got Martian Mole, Martian Squirrel, and Martian Mouse. Or as they prefer to go by on Earth, we've got Mason, Mabel, Kiara, and Hugo. And together, our three heroes, played by four kids, are going to solve mysteries, right, wrong, general, make the Martian planet a better place. Let's go ahead and get right to it, guys. I want to drop you right into the middle of the situation that you are in right now. So, Martian mole, Martian squirrel, Martian mouse, you are all waking up inside of a very strange and peculiar room. So let's look at our characters real quick. We have the mole on the right right there. We've got the mouse in the foreground right there and the squirrel over there on the left. And you all feel very confused, disheveled. It's like you were drugged or something or kidnapped. You've never seen this room that you find yourselves in before. And it's a really weird looking place, isn't it? There's three buttons on the ground around you. There's a curtain on the one side. There's a warthog's head with a ring through its nose, a suit of armor. You guys are gonna have to tell me what you want to change about this room. You're gonna have to interact with the objects here to try to figure out how to get, figure out who put you in the room in the first place. So what do you guys think? Anybody have an idea of how you would like to start something you would like to look at closer or touch first? You can just shout it out. You don't have to, uh, what, what, do you have an idea, Martian Squirrel? Um, you move the curtain and see if anything's behind it. Look at the curtain, an excellent idea. So Martian Squirrel, using his very strong and powerful tail, stands up and very carefully pulls aside the curtain that is blocking one of the walls. And when you remove the curtain, it reveals a very peculiar looking portrait, a portrait of a sinister looking face. Guys, do you see who that is? It's a raccoon. <laughs> it's Martian Raccoon. This must be Martian Raccoon's lair. You guys don't know much about Martian Raccoon, but you do know the reputation he has is bad. He is a bad dude. And by dude, I mean raccoon. He's a bad raccoon. <laughs> so now you know a little bit about where you're at, but you gotta get out. You guys have any ideas what you could interact with here to try to get out? There's those three buttons there. They look pretty interesting. Martian Mole, you got any ideas? Kiara, Hugo? One of the buttons. Oh, which one do you want to press? There's one, two, and three right there. Uh, two. Two, okay. Well, you go ahead and press two, and uh, something very interesting happens. Oh, gosh! <laughs> I get flipped upside down! Ah! Is up, down, down is up! Is gravity even working? Uh, let's, let's check. That actually doesn't help me decide! I don't know! <laughs> Cook, you gotta press the button again. Get me back up right. This is terrible, guys. Will you press the button again? Oh, she presses it again. Okay, excellent. Oh, oh goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Martian Mole. I guess not, not thank you for inverting me, but thank you for setting me back up right again. Wow. Okay, there are consequences in this room. If you press the wrong button, all sorts of bad stuff could happen. But you wanna press another one? There's two other buttons. We could press number three. Press number three? Okay, well you go ahead and you press number three and something else strange happens. Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh, there's my leg, it's gotten a bear trap! Ah! Oh, press it again, get the bear trap off! Okay, oh good, okay. Oh gosh, 
the bear trap undoes <laughs> itself. Huh. And you know, maybe maybe you should press something other than the buttons because <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of bear traps or getting uh, flipped upside down. <laughs> is there anything else in that room that you think is interesting you'd like to look at closer? Uh, uh, read one of those books right there. Okay. So you look at one of the books on the shelf and they all appear to be pretty boring books. They're all Martian raccoons uh, journal, but he doesn't say anything about his plans or anything in there. All he talks about is how great he is. It's page after page of, boy, was there ever such a raccoon as I? I have waxed my mustache to the point of perfection. And my cloak here, my white jacket, oh, it's so dashing. I am such a dashing raccoon. I am great. <laughs> what, what did you say there, Martian Mouse? Or was that you, Martian Mole? Sorry. I... My little brother was just telling me French. Oh, okay. <laughs> Martian Mouse or Martian Squirrel? Do you guys have an idea about what you could look at? Yeah, Martian Squirrel. You can just call it out. You don't have to oh, raise your hand. Um, through the ring on the, um, the word That's hog. Weird. Yeah, the warthog. Excellent. Okay. All right. So Martian squirrel climbs up. Do you use your hands or do you use your tail to pull the ring? Um, tail. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Martian squirrel steps up onto the desk there with the typewriter and pulls on the ring of the warthog. And something happens. What, ha what happens? A noise plays. A set of four or five notes. However many that was. I lost count. <laughs> And uh, so there's, there's music. Um, that's weird. Maybe that's part of a puzzle. I wonder if you could do anything with those notes. Um, the guitar in the floor. Oh, the guitar. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well, it turns out uh, I can actually hold that guitar in the real world here, <laughs> back on Earth. So what were those notes? Maybe if we play those notes on the guitar, something will happen. So I can't, I can't hear it. You guys are the only ones that can hear it. Can you hum it for me or sing it for me or something? Mm, 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 mm. One more time? Like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, was that it? Well, something happens, wait. Oh, can you guys see? In the room right now, the suit of armor begins to shake. And oh, and no, the table begins to pull back into the wall. Oh my goodness. And now it rotates around. And what is left but a fish on a pedestal. Oh, hello there, says the fish. Hey guys, I've been back in that secret passage there for like a year, so thank you for letting me out. Um, I, I, I really appreciate you uh, letting me out. I, I, uh, I see you're trapped here too. And we all seem to be trapped in the lair of Martian Raccoon. You guys have any questions you want to ask me? Anything you'd like to know about this room or how to get out? You could maybe ask the fish. He's been here for a year, he says. Maybe he knows all the secrets. Um. Um, the safe? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a safe over there and there's a key to it. Um, and I think the key has something to do with a typewriter. Um, but I don't know how you, how you actually open the safe. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I can help you out later, but I don't know. <laughs> hey, look, I'm, I'm wondering, I, would you guys help me leave? I would like to get out of here. I'd like to escape. I'm going to see class. What's that? Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, um, you see, there's there's a there's a little drone over there on the shelf. You guys see that drone that'll like fly around one of those remote control things? What drawing? Oh, there it is. Yeah, behind Martian Squirrel and Martian Mole there. Yeah, see that drone right there? Uh, it, it it can actually pick me up and take me away. And I was wondering, do you think you could maybe uh turn it on and attach it to me? Now guys, I wanna ask you, so you just found this strange fish inside a villain's lair. And I don't know if you know anything about fish and villain's lairs, but they often uh, aren't friendly. 
I wonder, can you actually trust this fish? If you let him go, maybe he's gonna tell Martian Raccoon where you're at. Don't let him go. Do you wanna, what could you do to figure out if he's trustworthy or not? Um, do you wanna have... pray with the characters and ask him something? Um. <laughs> you could just ask him if he's a good guy. Okay. What are you going to say to him? Um, Martian Squirrel, what will you say? Uh, um, he hears your sneeze and says, my goodness, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, if that sneeze is a, is a, if you're questioning whether my character is, uh, is legitimate or not, and by sneezing at me, do you sneeze at me, sir? Do you sneeze at me? <laughs> What would you like to say to a Martian squirrel? Um, are you a good guy? Well, yes, I am as honest as I am wet, and I'm a fish in a fishbowl, so you better believe I'm very honest. I don't like Martian raccoon any better than you do. You should let me go, because I've been trapped here, and that's just the fair thing to do. What do you guys think? Do you trust him? No. <laughs> A suspicious squirrel. Uh, so, uh, Martian Mole, do you have any ideas? What might you ask of the fish? Mm, I don't have any ideas yet. Okay. Well, here, how about this? Um, you ask me whether or not something is good or evil, and I'll answer as truthfully as I can. And if I get all the questions right, then maybe you can let me go. What do you think about that? What did you say? Sorry, my little brother is being a little distracting. <laughs> uh, well, why don't you ask me if something is good or evil? And if I get the answer right, then uh, I'll then you can trust that I'm a good person. That's how that works, right? You're asking that. What's that? You're asking that. Oh, you, you, yes, you, you, Martian Mole. Do you want to ask? Do you want to ask me whether or not something is good or evil? Um. Who am I asking that to? He's asking you. Oh, ask. fish there. Just ask who is evil. Is this evil or not? Um, I don't get what you're, um, what you mean. Okay. Well, you could say something like, um, if you step on a bug, is that good or evil? If you step on a what? On a bug? She stepped on a bug. Um, evil? Okay, yeah, okay, uh, okay, yeah. Um, so I guess I must be uh, a pretty good fish then because I got that question right. <laughs> All right, will you guys let me go? If you just put that drone, if you attach it to me, if you turn on the drone, it'll come over and pick me up. Will you guys do that? Wait, what? So there's that little, uh, there's that little remote control uh, aircraft there. And if you turn it on, Something's gonna happen. See, oh, look, you have, oh, it's now on. The, the drone is gonna soar down and it's got a little claw and it's gonna pick me up. And so uh, thank you so much for doing that because it's perfect. I am going to leave this fine room here and escape off into the other, go into another place. Good luck, guys. I want you to know that I think the next step of your riddle, you're going to have to um, spin my pedestal around again and uh, play with the typewriter. That's the next puzzle that you need to solve. All right, bye. Bye, guys. I'm going to leave. And he soars out through a skylight, through a window in the ceiling that uh, is too high for you guys to climb through. <laughs> All right. Um, so now Martian Squirrel turns the pedestal around, and you are once again looking at the typewriter that's there. All right. Do you guys want to look more closely at that typewriter like the fish told you to? Sure. Okay, so you look at the typewriter and uh, you can see that there's something kind of special about the keys. So if you look at the actual letters that the typewriter is typed up, it says, please type the password. It says, please type the password. And if you look at the keys of the typewriter, can you see that some of them are uh, covered in purple ink? It almost yeah. like the last person that used this typewriter and typed the password had purple ink on their fingers. 
So I bet if you figured out what these letters were, you could figure out what the password was. A-S. Do you guys know what those letters are? No. A-S-R-M. A-S-R-M. You're right. And can you rearrange those letters to spell a word, maybe? Mars. Mars! Let's try it. Okay. So you type M-A-R-S. And there's a clicking sound. And the desk drawer below the typewriter opens up. And inside it, you find two very peculiar things. You open up the desk drawer, and inside is a blueprint for a jetpack. Blueprints for the jetpack. <laughs> and also, you find this very strange invention right here that you should probably take a closer look at. Do you guys want to look at the invention? Yeah. What does it look like to you? Like something that makes music. Yeah, it does. Do you think there's a way to like, what should you do with it next? Like open it and maybe there's like something inside. Oh, there certainly is something inside. A whole lot of wires. It's kind of crazy, huh? Maybe it's for music, like I said, because there's a lot of wires and things like that. Yeah. Do you think there's a way to turn it on or something? Maybe there's a switch. Is there a Close switch in there? Do you see one? Close it back up. Um, press that button right there. Nothing seems to happen when I press the button. Um, Is there a switch in there? Uh, no, I don't see one. Martian Squirrel, do you see a switch? Um, at the bottom. Oh, right here? Yeah. Oh, a light turned on. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, what's next? Oh, look at that. <laughs> maybe you should press the button. If nothing happened, maybe the button will work now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It looks like it's spelling things out. I don't see what it's spelling because it's too fast. I wonder if we could write it out. I've got a piece of paper right here. Do you think that we could write out the letters that it's spelling? Um, yeah. It's all right, let's... hard to say them all because once I say a letter, it switches to like the third letter. Should I press it and we'll start from the top? I think it resets every time you press the button. P H I. Um, D, R, uh, K, um, M, <laughs> R, T. Here, I'll start, I'll start over. Let's try to do it in order so it, it'll, uh. It's hard to do it in order because it's very fast. Yeah, it is very fast, isn't it? Um, okay, so it's T, H, I, R, D, B, O, O, K, and then I missed it. What's next? T, I, R, B, B, O, O, K, B, O, O, K. F, N, M, R, H, I, H, T, um, can't see anything, uh, T, H, T, I think it started over again. So, um, so we're just missing a couple letters right here. I forgot what they were because it's very fast. F R O M. Okay, I think that's the message right there. What does it say? There. Um, I can't read it. Third book from right. Yeah. Okay. Martian squirrels got it. Book from right. So you remember, there's a bookshelf, right, that was filled with books. And if you go over to it and you find the third book from the right, you're going to find it's a very particular book. And I actually have it right here. So inside, you open it up, and there's some pages and some, you know, some uh, numbers and letters and some poems. And 
I don't know, a spot with a key. Some vandals might have cut a hole in the middle. And then it looks like there's some more numbers and uh, some letters and uh, an appendix. But I guess nothing to help us, huh? The key. The key. Oh, the key. Oh, yeah, that's right. We <laughs> Could we use the key? <laughs> to get into the safe. Oh, the safe. That's right. Yeah, Let's safe. try that. Okay, so you take the key out. And uh, Martian Squirrel, you're going to go ahead and open that safe up. Inside the safe, you find two very peculiar objects. Inside is an itinerary for Martian mayor. And there's also this very strange looking crank, which I've already taken the liberty of affixing to the wall right here. <laughs> so this crank was inside the safe. So you can crank the crank or you can look at the itinerary first, which would you like to do? Crank the crank. Let's try it, okay. <laughs> now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put on this helmet here for no real reason. <laughs> Just because I think it fits. <laughs> uh, okay, so you start to crank the crank. And will you guys do a, a cranking gesture with me? There you go, yeah, yeah. Oh, and something is happening, isn't it? Kiara, you, you gotta help me out here. Martian Mole, will you crank? Will you make the cranking motion? There we go. The lights are yeah. on the belt, on your belt. Oh yeah, the lights are going up, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, it's like they keep stopping though. I wonder if we just go a little slower. Is something going to happen? Oh. <laughs> and Betty shot out of the top of my head. <laughs> oh, what that? Well, you see, I was representing the suit of armor in the, uh, in the world that we were in. So the suit of armor just shot confetti out of its head <laughs> and its suspenders lit up and it's now coming to life. And it says, I am Nightbot 3000. You have activated me, but I only respond to my villain's commands. Are you the villain that I know? Yes. <laughs> well, I will need some proof of that. The only way I can tell that my villain is the real villain is I have them give me maniacal laughter. Can you guys maniacally laugh for me? <laughs> I don't have to laugh. You know how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, yes. Can you all do it, Kiara? Can you give us some maniacal laughter? <laughs> <laughs> you go, you want to give us a maniacal laugh? I don't think you want to. I think you want to laugh. <laughs> Martian Mouse, do you, have a, do you have a laugh for us? <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> ah, excellent. <laughs> All right, you have successfully uh, activated me, and that means that a key is going to come down this pneumatic tube. A key descends. There's one more key, guys, and it's coming out the bottom of the tube. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Quick, grab that key. Martian Mole, go grab the key. Martian Mole goes ahead and grabs the key, and the key actually grabs, it opens the front door. So the three of you are able to head out now, but. Do you remember that itinerary that was in the safe? Do you maybe want to look at that real quick before you head out? Yeah. Okay, take a look at this itinerary. You can see it's the itinerary of Martian Mayor. I think that Martian Raccoon is planning on kidnapping Martian Mayor. And I think that Martian Raccoon kidnapped you guys that you couldn't interfere with you trying to take over Martian Mayor. So do you guys think you can go and save the mayor? Yeah. yeah. All right, so the three of you leave the, the lair of Martian Raccoon. But here's the thing. If you saw, the, 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 um, the, the mayor is going to be in the town square at 9 o'clock. And when you look at the clock, it's 8.57 right now. You guys are going to have to run to get to the square in time. Can you guys run for me? Give me your arms. Just Come on, run as fast as you can. You got to run fast, guys. Run, run, run. Oh, my goodness. And you're zipping faster and faster. You're moving through this town as fast as you can. And you get to the town square and the most peculiar sight you've ever seen is there in front of you. Martian Raccoon is there. He's wearing a jetpack and he's flying through the air. And there's a rope tied around the mayor of Red Pebble, who's Martian Lizard. Martian Lizard's holding for dear life onto a fire hydrant and is being pulled away by Martian Raccoon. 
you guys are going to have to find a way to save this lizard. So let's, uh, <laughs> so it's going to be a pretty crazy situation here. But how might you save a lizard that's being pulled off the ground by a raccoon wearing a jetpack? Do you guys have any ideas? Mm. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening there. Oh my goodness, guys. So there's the poor mayor of the town being pulled by Martian raccoon. How can you save this lizard? What are you going to do? You could try to like pull back up with the lizard. Okay, the three of you all grab a hold of the lizard and you try and pull the lizard back. But the jetpack is so strong. That jetpack is super, super powerful. Can you do anything else to stop that raccoon? Cut the string. Cut the string! Excellent idea, Martian squirrel! Uh, oh, how, how are you gonna cut it? Do you, do you find like a sharp rock on the ground or something? You could try to like find like a sharp rock or a sharp stick. Martian mole finds a sharp rock that's shaped just like a pair of scissors. And as you watch the <laughs> sharp rock, you throw it in the air and it cuts the rope and Martian raccoon flies up into the sky and the mayor is saved. And the mayor says, oh gosh, guys, you saved me. You did it. You saved the village of Red Pebble by saving me, the mayor. You know, uh, I'm really grateful. It looks like you guys did everything you set out to do. You escaped from the villain's lair and you also managed to free that poor fish uh, who's now flying away. He, he's a flying fish. He always wanted to be a flying fish. It was his dream. And now uh, I'm free as well. So guys, in your honor, I want to throw a disco party. Do you guys want to dance some more with me? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's have a disco party. We did it! We solved the mystery! We had Martian Mouse! Mabel was incredible! We had Martian Squirrel! Mason with the strong tail! And the throwing of sharp rock at the end there! We had Hugo and Kiara playing as Martian Mole! Saving the day! Coming up with all sorts of crazy ways to see so the world. Sweet, but and now, on your feet, Mars wonder, is better, guys. He's done it. It's got now, instead of having no mayor in the village of Red Pebble, instead of having a flying fish trapped forever in a villain's lair, instead of having a suit of armor that is never turned on again but just sits there robotically against the wall. What is a villain? What's a villain? Huh? A villain is a bad guy. A villain is, um, so you know how like sometimes a story will have a hero? Yeah. A, a villain is the opposite of the hero. They're the person that goes, that fights against the hero or strives against them the whole time and works against them the whole time. So a villain is the opposite of a hero. Oh, I get it. Do you remember, Kiara, your, uh, your, your, your mischievous fairy from the typewriter stories that we were doing? Yeah. In some ways, she might be our villain in other stories that we write in the future, I think. Uh -huh. And I have to tell you, Kiara, that another, uh, somebody had watched the episode that you were in and they wanted to write a story about the, uh, the evil fairy, the trickster fairy. And so we actually wrote a story about your character, which was really fun. <laughs> so Kiara, I have to ask you though, that fairy, is its name uh, Margaret? Is that okay? Did you say is the fairy named Margaret? Oh, yeah. It is? Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Do you guys like my suspenders? <laughs> They're an important part of this show, yeah. too. Right? They're pretty cool. They go so well with the disco ball, I find. It's just like so Yeah, much I would love to have a disco ball. <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so for those of you who are tuning in right now, if you're watching on our streams, I want to tell you a little bit about what's happening next. So in the very next thing that's going to happen, my good friend Dave English is going to be doing Clay Creature Request Line. You will give him something you want to see made out of clay and he will bring it to life with clay. And then he'll like act out little stories with the creatures that you come up with. It's really fun. After that, we're going to have The Buzz where my friends Adam 
and the stick bug heart. He's an animated character. He's really cool uh, and really funny. They're going to tell you all about bugs through a bunch of different stories. And you're going to go out into Adam's garden and actually meet some real life bugs in addition to Harv, the stick bug. And then after that, Cody. Say, I don't understand what you're saying. What's that? I don't understand what you mean. So if you stay on this call, Kiara, there's going to be a bunch of other activities to do as well for the rest of the day. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to be really fun and you can participate in other ways. Last of all is going to be Code Joy, and they'll be teaching you how to code cardboard robots, um, which is going to be really fun. And then finally, I'll be back for typewriter stories. With that, guys, I would like to thank you once again. I am Dr. Sparks. This was the Martian Explorations. Guys, a round of applause for our excellent heroes that did such a great job today. If you liked what you saw here, you can go to drsparks.com and sign your kid up for a future episode. And you can also throw us a tip or become a Patreon subscriber that way. If you like the work that we're doing, I'm like. I'm of course going to go in a future episode. <laughs> yes, of course you will. Yeah, I hope we have you back soon, Kiara. All right, guys, take care. Until next time, I'm Dr. Sparks. This is the Martian Explorations, and have fun. Bye. 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 That was fun. Great show today on Dr. Sparks. Great storytelling. Great Mars Adventures. Hello. Hello, Dave. Oh, wait, no, I'm Dave. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave, and this is my teacher request line, where I make clay creatures at your request. Quest, 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 quest. And I make up my, I create my own echo of facts. Just whenever I want to. So, uh, yeah. Put a message in the chat. Send us a message on Facebook. Write a letter and mail it to us. What you making today, Dave? Request line phone. And tell me, what do you want me to make out of clay? And if you have clay at home, you can make along with me and create wonderful creatures. I was working with a kid earlier this week on Clay Creature Request Line who called in and said, Now listen, Dave, I need you to make me a red dinosaur, one of those dinosaurs that swims uh, in the ocean, that used to swim in the oceans, uh, one of those Loch Ness Monster types. And uh, so I made this guy. That kid had great ideas. So we made this beautiful red Plesiosaurus, or Plesiosaur. Plesiosaur. That's we found out that these sort of dinosaurs are called. There are other dinosaurs who swim in the water. And ish. Are they, are they very polite? Yeah. Yeah, what should I make? I've got all these clay balls. I've got these clay tools. Ooh. I do have pink. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna warm up my pink clay by rolling about, it in the ball. Dave, how about a geodesic dome? I think the idea of a one. Morning, Harv. How's it going, Adam? Can you hear me, Adam? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I don't think Dave can hear us, though. Oh, uh, okay. Probably just as well. Looks like we got a nice crowd for today. What if I made a pink seal instead? Good morning, Penelope. They can hear me. Nice to oh, see you. Oh, wow. So, uh, just so you know that I'm not ignoring you, uh, we're having a couple of technical difficulties right now where I can't, I can't hear you. So, uh, I don't mean to ignore your requests. Hi. It's uh, all right. Uh, you can put your requests in the chat so we can read them because we can't we hear you, you right now. All right, we can hear you guys all right. So, if anybody has a request, I can send it over to Dave using the magic of the internet. 
and wow, it's so nice to see you guys again. Henry, how you doing, man? Can can you make your daddy like? Yeah. Matt, nice to see you too. Hi. Right now, I'm working on a pink on a pink seal, just to pass the time and keep myself out of trouble. Clark says you should uh, do a daddy long legs. A daddy long legs. All right, I'm, I'll I will make a as skinny of a spider as I can. Hey, you guys doing today? Henry, good to see you. Andrew and Penelope, Adam, wow. Okay. Hey, Penelope, how are you doing? Good. Can't hear you, Adam. I don't know if you muted yourself or what's going on, but... Today we're doing a yard sale. Huh, I got uh, muted by mistake. A yard sale? What are you selling? Um, toys and clothes. And we've also got a customer coming right now. Oh, yeah, right now? What, what do you think you're going to sell them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mommy's out there right now, huh? Mommy and Xander are out there. How much are you charging, Penelope? Depends on what it is. Anything I would like? We're just selling toys. <laughs> Stuffed animals. Penelope, Stuffed do you have any toys? Penelope, do you have any toys for stick insects? Toys and clothes. What, what did he say? Penelope, do you have any shirts for stick insects? Anything my size? I do fit into Barbie clothes. <laughs> well, Although, we usually they're not Barbie funny. clothes. All right, let's see what you got. I'm game for anything. I take what I can get these days. <laughs> I'll go get... All right, nice. Meanwhile, what's old Dave up to? Hmm, looks like he is doing some serious Daddy Long Legs action. But right now it looks like the long legs are now rather short legs, but they're gonna be long, I promise. Fino Dave, it's a slow build up to something awesome. It's true. Henry, what's going on, bud? Hey. Doing well. Good to see you. How you been, Henry? I um have been looking at all of my creations with loom bands. Awesome. Wait, will you hold one up to the hold one up to the camera, Henry? If you don't mind. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. This is my mom's favorite. Well, that's because it's so beautiful. Yeah. That's my guess, at least. Oh, Penelope, did you bring me some clothes? Yeah. All right, let's these see. Are, these two are from a tutorial called, and they are called um, origami. Hey, those look pretty good. I think I could fit into those. These are flowers. Wow, you know, that's pretty snazzy. That's that's very, uh, very colorful, but I think I could pull it off. What do you think, Adam? Adam, I think you're muted, friend. It's a soccer outfit. I think you can pull it off, Harv. I think so, too. I very much think so. This is a I, I like the outfit. I like the whole outfit together. It's a great ensemble. <laughs> Usually when people say they've got body clothes for me, I end up wearing stuff from like Pocahontas, Esmeralda. Oh, look, Henry's showing off some goods. I am usually end up in a dress, which isn't a bad thing, but uh, I don't think I can pull off a dress as well I'm as some sure of my I'll give you it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to come. I'm going to bring, do you take, uh, do you take MasterCard? Visa. Do you take American Express? 
Only Diners Club. Diners Club, great. <laughs> How about AAA discount? <laughs> or they could be free. Or they could be free, that's true. So today, guys, we're not going to be heading into a breakout room, but we are going to talk just a little bit about uh, what's going on. Most of you guys have done this before, but I was wondering if anybody here has a cool bug story they would like to share this week. Penelope, what do you got for us? Um, Talk to us, Penelope. One time, um, well, me and Daddy were driving on the buggy. We There was a Daddy long leg, and it was freaking me out. Wow. wow. Did it look like, what color eyes did it have? It was pretty big. What color? What did it have red eyes? Staring at you. <laughs> we can give this one oh, a look. Oh, yeah. It had like eight blue eyes and nine red eyes. Nine red eyes. <laughs> wow. Red eyes. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. 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 Adam, are you familiar with the nine red-eyed Daddy Longlegs? <laughs> um, I think I saw him at the at Kroger the other day. I just, I, 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 I couldn't look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you guys can hear me. Henry, oh, that Henry, awesome. what you Yeah, that's cool. Henry, do you got a cool bug story for us? Yeah. Okay, so, cool. Um, um, I... Well, hold on. Before you tell it, why don't we wait until the show starts and then you can tell it, you can think about it a little bit because the show's going to start here in like one minute and Adam will kind of lead you through it. Okay. Henry, I'm really I can't excited wait. To hear and Penelope, I you know, maybe you'll tell us about that nine red eyed daddy long legs once more. I would yeah. very much like to hear that. <clears throat> and, all right, now to apply the eyes. All right, the nine red eyes. Nine red eyes. Coming up. Excellent. Oh, I should take off my sunglasses. I don't look very professional, do I? There we go. All right. And I think there's going to be some people filtering in and out. But until then, I think we're about ready to start. What do you think, Adam? I think we're about ready, Har. All right. Well, let's get started. About the butterflies that you hatched inside. Or the ladybug habitat you made. That's cool. It's the Buzz with field reporter Adam Lazarus and news anchor Harv Stickley and junior reporters you. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another star-studded episode of The Buzz. I'm Herb Stickley, and we are about to begin. Are you ready? Oh I said, God. are you ready? Yes! That's yes. what I like to hear. All right. I now, thing... ready. I am ready. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Now, things are heating up in the world of sports is the tri-annual wolf spider weightlifting competition is in full swing. Here we can see professional bodybuilder Wolf Lundgren as he lifts an entire stone using only the power of his glutes. His balance is impeccable. His form unmatched. I'm willing to bet that guy could crush my skull as if it were a sparrow's egg. Mm -hmm. Whoa, we should probably hit the gym later, right, Adam? Actually, Harv, uh, happy to tell you that wasn't a wolf spider carrying a stone. In fact, that wasn't Wolf Lundgren at all. That was just a female wolf spider uh, carrying her egg sac. Eventually, those eggs will hatch, and then um, the spiderlings will also ride on her until their first molt. Wow. Uh, wow, that is um um uh, that 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 is horrifying. That is horrifying. Uh, yeah, and you, you know she could still probably crush you like a sparrow's egg. Not helping. 
All right, uh, let's see. Mo let's move on to uh, to traffic, huh? If you're thinking of heading up I-65 North, you may want to consider taking another route. A large convoy of termites is slowly but steadily making their way up the interstate, making traffic an absolute nightmare, especially for those without wings. Woo! Thank goodness you drove with me today, Adam. Uh, I can safely say that the carpool lane was considerably less crowded. Oh, actually, Harv, you know, we can expect that that traffic would be moving pretty slow, pretty well, I mean, pretty smoothly, because those termites are following chemical trails that they've laid down to create their own highway. And uh, they use these highways to connect different parts of their population and also to connect to sources of food. Wow, really? Huh. Uh huh. Well, regardless, there's still no match for my tricked out 1998 Suzuki Esteem. Well, Adam, since you're on a roll, why don't you share with us some of your findings in the Los Angeles branch of the microcosm? Absolutely, I've got some good stuff today to show you. Well, let's see. All right. So today, I thought we'd look at I like a special category of bugs that um, are things that look like they could kill you just from looking at them, but are, that are actually quite harmless. Has anyone ever seen one of, has anyone ever seen a vinegaroon? Vinegaroon, oh, I don't know, have you guys seen one? So check this out. Whoa. You guys, you guys ever see this before? Not me. And I'm a this bug. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so this right here is called a vinegaroon. Let me get a, a wider shot of it. This, this thing is big enough that we don't really need a macro. That is a monster. What's going on with its head there? What's all over its face? So we've got a few things here. Um, on the front of its face, right in front of us, these are claws that it uses to search for food. So it reaches out and grabs with these powerful arms. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, bring it closer. Okay. You know what, maybe I'll put my macro back on so we can get a really close look at this incredible beast. You stay right there for a second, Rooney. So why do those claws look like they're coming out of its face? <clears throat> they kind of are, Harv. Woo. He's had to look at. There hey, we go. You know, <clears throat> it's a rich tapestry, right? It's a rich tapestry, that's right. And this. This vinegaroon has a mother that probably loves her very much. So right in front, under, behind my finger, there are these claws that are folded up like boxing gloves, but they can extend and grab other animals. Usually they grab other insects like crickets or, uh, you know, any little thing that they find, beetles, millipedes, you name it. But I've also seen them eat lizards and other small vertebrates. And then you see those things waving around? Those, those are special modified legs that she uses to sense the environment. They're kind of like antenna. But um, can anyone tell me what this bug looks like to you? What does this bug remind you of? He's the leader of the club and friends to you and me. He looks like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Henry or Xander or Penelope, what does this bug remind you of? Does it remind you of anything that you've seen A before? Scorpion. Very good, a scorpion. It so it turns like, out that- It looks uh -huh. like a bee slash Mi Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so it turns out this thing is related to scorpions um, and spiders. It's an arachnid, um, but here's where it's different from all of them. One of the many reasons. If you look at its back end, This right here, can you see this thread sticking out? Mm -hmm. It's actually 
using this thread against me right now. So out of the tip of that thread right there, it fires acetic acid, which is vinegar. So when you find one of these things in the wild and you pick it up, your hands might smell like salad dressing. And that's because it uses this thread to fire acetic acid, which is vinegar, out at its enemies. And it doesn't hurt you unless it was to get in your eye or something like that, but usually that doesn't happen. But it hurts other bugs, right? Yucky. It hurts, that's right, it hurts other bugs. Would you guys feel comfortable holding this? Henry, no. Xander, or Penelope, would any of you guys feel comfortable holding this? No. 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 I, bet, I bet you would if we hung out for a day. I bet you'd be holding this very special beast right here. She's got little eyes. You can just make out. Can you see little eyes like almost right at the end of my thumbnail? Um, she's got, can you see those? Yeah. Oof, creepy stuff, but also fascinating. How many eyes does she have? You know, Harv, I'm not sure. I wanna say eight, but I'm not actually sure. Wow. Let me see well, if I can is... unfold the claw so that you can see what that looks like. Yeah, let's this is check pretty that out. All right, check this out. Give me a second, guys. It'll be worth it for you to see this incredible claw. <clears throat> She's actually in pretty good shape. This is, I think, um, a fairly happy vinegar. Where room. is that insect from? It's from the southwestern United States. Is the biggest species is from the southwestern United States, but it has there are other species in different parts of the world. So look at this. If we unfold this claw right here, wow! Look at that. It's actually got three. Can you see? It's got sort of three fingers on it. So whereas the claws of a lot of things like scorpions, they or lobsters, they just have two fingers. A vinegaroon claw actually has three fingers that it uses to grab its food. Gosh. That is so neat, like little barbs. I bet that really helps keep the bugs and lizards in place. It really helps keep the, bug, the bugs and lizards in place. And as you can see, if this thing were harmful, I would not be able to do this, right? So you know that this is a, a harmless creature, even though it looks absolutely terrifying. Terrifying. Wow. That really is terrifying, Adam. That is some truly, truly fascinating stuff. Thank you for sharing uh, your Absolutely findings in the hard. Los Angeles branch. All right. Now, we are going to head over to our overseas correspondent, Farthington Entwistle, as he shares with us a piece of history. If you've never ever watched Bug Bites on PBS, you may have seen this before. It's time for Great Bugs in History. Welcome to another riveting installment of Great Bugs in History. Ah, caterpillar saliva. Who among us can resist its gentle caress? What's that you say? Not a fan of bug spit? Well, you might be once you realize that we're talking about none other than silk. The soft, sensuous thread produced by Bombix Mori, the silkworm. From special salivary glands, the caterpillar secretes fibroin, a sticky liquid that solidifies upon contact with the air, becoming silk. Before turning into a moth, the silkworm spins a cocoon around itself from a single strand that can be over one kilometer long. At least 5,000 years ago, people in China began making fabric from the cocoons of silkworms. Exactly how this process started may be lost to history, but legend has it that the ancient empress Laizu, wife of the Yellow Emperor, was having midday tea when a silkworm cocoon fell in her drink. The hot liquid caused the silken cocoon to unravel, and Laizu wound the beautiful thread around her finger until she unwrapped the caterpillar inside, revealing the source of this very soft but very strong material. Soon, the Empress was growing her own silkworms on mulberry trees, the caterpillar's favorite food. Today, Laizu is highly revered in China and has been given the name Kan Nainai, 
or silkworm mother. How to turn silkworm cocoons into cloth was a closely guarded Chinese secret for thousands of years. But today, silk is produced in many countries around the world and is used in everything from clothing to medical devices to bicycle tires. For its long history with humans, we raise our juice glasses to Bombix Mori, the silkworm, and welcome it into the lofty halls of Great Bugs in History. Wow, that was amazing. Spitting never looked so cool. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, especially during quarantine. Kind of gross. Let's keep our spit to ourselves. Yeah, I'm into that. I think that's a very good idea. But it is time now for our junior reporters to share their findings in the world of entomology. Adam, would you care to take point on this? I would love to, Harv. All right, we've got a bunch of folks with us today. I would love to hear some cool bug stories. Some people gave us previews of bug stories that they might tell us. Who would like to volunteer and tell us some bug experience that they have had? Um, uh, I, I see, I see a hand. Let's start with Penelope because she had a really cool story that she wanted to share with us. Talk to us, hon. Thank you, Penelope. One time when me and my dad were driving on the tractor, we, I found a daddy leg and it was freaking me out. Why, why did it freak you out, Penelope? Talk to me. Tell, tell us about that daddy long legs. Um, it was this big. Oh, that's huge. Oh my gosh, what did it look like? Did Xander see it too? In nine red eyes. Nine red eyes. So you counted, you counted nine red eyes. Did you use all three of your own eyes to do that? <laughs> How many eyes do you have, Penelope? Two. I don't know. You could have eyes in the back of your head. I hear most parents do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they start when you're young and then they fully develop when you become a parent. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds like a terrifying experience. Me. You can, yeah. I can see I, we can see behind you. What do you see? I can see behind you. I can see behind me a chair. Hey, you're right. That bad eye is coming in well. Oh, that's so cool. Way to go, Penelope. I'm really proud well, of your third eye. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Does anybody else have a cool bug story they want to share with us? Let's see. Oh, I think Livio is going crazy over here. I think he's got a story to tell. Awesome, Livio. Super excited to hear that story. What's up, Antonietta? We find recently at Livio, you're on mute right now. Unmute yourself and tell us your amazing story because we can't wait to hear it. So I have a whole colony of wasps in my backyard. So sometimes I catch them. And they sting me sometimes. And really? It's really What kind fun. of wasp do you have? Yellow jackets. And they sting you sometimes, and that's fun, huh? It's funny. <laughs> I think it's funny, too. You're not I'm not scared. Yeah, wh where are they nesting, maybe? Do you want me to show you? <laughs> yeah, and talk to us. Well, well, I don't know, Livio, if you're going to get stung on the one hand, like, I truly admire that as a fellow sting seeker. On the other hand, I don't think in good conscience as a teacher, I could sanction a, <laughs> a, a young student to go and get stung by wasps. No. Yeah, I'm not sure having children get harmed on our live program is a great idea. <laughs> All right, you won't do it on the camera. <laughs> but Le Libio, you, where, where are they what? nesting, huh? Where are they nesting? In a log. Ooh. In the backyard. I would love pictures of that. Okay, we'll send him a We will. If you okay. send a video, too, we can put it on the show. All right, now, 
Give it up for our fantastic, our fantastic junior reporters. I know we're going to have a couple more stories at the end, but first, wait a second. First, uh oh, this just in. This just in. <laughs> Move over, Corona. A strange new fungus has been spotted in the giant water bug community, and it might not be long until it dooms us all. Uh, See here, a giant water bug. Has- is a strange mushroom-like fungus sprouting from its back. Whether or not this new fungus Ew. has hijacked his hippocampus is up for debate. However, his zombie like state is likely the result of said fungus, and it's probably coming for us next. Oh no. Adam, Adam, do you think a mask would protect me from this new deadly fungus? Uh, Harv, I am so happy to report that thankfully this horrific story is false. That is not a fungus at all. It's not? No, that formation on his back is a clutch of giant water bug eggs. Uh, The female glues them to the back of the male and then he guards them by guarding himself as he just runs around and looks for food in the water. Oh, okay, So, so, so there's really no danger here. That's right. So what happens is those eggs are glued to his back, forcing him to, he's not able to fly while they're stuck to his back like that. But eventually those eggs will hatch into tiny little baby giant water bugs. And then the glue will eventually wear off and he'll be free again to fly when he wants. Woo! Well, that is a relief. Ugh. Remind me never to have kids. Now, I don't know if you guys keep in touch with the latest trends, but a new sitcom has just hit the airwaves and we have an exclusive first look. Dant. Yeah, what is it, honey? Get in here and help me with this laundry. Oh, come on, Rosie. You know why I can't do that. Oh, please, enlighten me, Dant. Well, let's check the chore wheel. Sorry, Rosie. I'm a drone ant. I don't need to do anything. Except eat, of course. Dant, just because all ant workers are female doesn't mean that you can't lift a feeler to help out around here. Uh, actually, Rosie, that's exactly what it means. Uh, but I love you. Uh, so let me help you clean these dishes, huh? Ah, you know I spoil you. Wow, 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 wow. Very, very interesting stuff. <laughs> but a part of me feels like it's not going to last. <laughs> I was anyway. just thinking the same thing, Harv. Best of luck I... to Roseanne and Dance. Yes, I hope Roseanne and Dance have a colorful career on television. But anyway, I'm getting kind of exhausted, Adam. What do you say we have our junior reporters take over from here? Harv, great idea. Okay, so we've heard great stories from Penelope and Livio. Let's see if we have any other stories we can squeeze out. Uh, Livio, who's your friend right there? I bet you he's got a story he wants to share. You're, you're on mute again, so we can't hear you. But you can unmute yourself. Unmuting. Okay. Oh, there we go. Who's, who's your friend over there, Livio? Carson. Carson. Good morning. You ever seen a cool bug? You ever seen something you wondered about? You ever been stung by a bee? You ever lifted up a rock and found a scorpion? Talk to us. Did you ever find a bug, Carson? Yes, I have. I found a centipede that just bit me. A scorpion that bit you? A centipede that just bit him, he said. Oh, tell us about it, Carson. Where did you find this crazy centipede? Um, at the, um, I forgot what the house is at the house. The YMCA parking behind the YMCA? No. Okay, so just tell them by a house you found it. I found a house that I found it, though. Wow, how did it feel when it bit you? 
Well, it bit me real good and it hurt so bad. It did, huh? It's like, like that. So, can I tell you what it, that centipede? It, it what that like centipede it, did to you? Yeah. It um, whereas lots of bugs that that hunt other bugs, they use like fangs to deliver venom, or they use a sting to deliver venom. What a centipede does, Carson is it has a front pair of legs that's hollow and full of venom and it pierces its victims or sometimes you with its front pair of legs and it injects venom through those legs. Wow. Yeah. Wow, well, I'm glad you made it. And I guess we learned a val valuable lesson. Stay away from houses, right? <laughs> Just <laughs> No, I think he's on to something. Now, wait a second. I'm, I'm getting something here. Something. Uh, one of our junior reporters, Henry, has, has a bug story. Oh, uh, wait a second. Oh, no, no, maybe. No, no, I'm getting. No, he doesn't. They do not have a bug story. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Adam, it sounds like we might be out of bug stories. What I need oh, to know oh. from you is, do you have one? Do I have a bug story? You don't want to miss his bug story. Listen. I, I sure do. So um, Leave it when open. I was a kid, um, I was sitting in the yard on an island on Martha's Vineyard and um, all of a sudden a huge army of red ants came oh running right by me. And I couldn't believe it. I'd never seen anything like that before. And they completely oh. ignored me. And they went up to an, another to ant nest. This is when he was a kid. And they just ran in. This whole big army of ants just ran into the other ant nest. And I was wondering what on earth they were doing. And then after a couple minutes, they all started running back out with eggs. And I found out that this was a type of ant that steals the eggs of other ants and raises them up in its own nest. And then when those eggs hatch, they do all the work in the colony. And these ants that went on the raid, they don't actually do any work. They just sit around and go on more raids. And they wait for the other ants to do all the work and dig the colony and everything. So you were fine. I was completely fine. They, they could not have cared less about me. I even tried putting my hand in the middle of the army. They just ran over and around it. They weren't interested in me at all. They were just interested in stealing the eggs from other ants. Were they fire ants, Adam? It was a type of ant called a slave-making ant, not a fire ant. Um, okay. The Latin name of which is called polyergus. Polyergus, Poly slave-making ant. Wow. That's pretty interesting, isn't that it? That is cool. It was so cool to see. And it turns out they live all over the country. So any of us can go outside, and if we're real lucky, they're kind of rare, but if we're real lucky, we can find our own colonies of slave-making ants and watch them go on raids where they steal the eggs from other ants. That's what we can look for next time we go on an adventure. I really hope you find some. Well, great job, everybody. That was some, oh, what's going on? What do you want to say, Carson? Do you want to say well, something? Those fire ants can blow out fire and get into the bodies. The body has fire and then the butt blows out fire. I don't think so, Carson. I don't wow, think that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds amazing <laughs> and fantastic. If you ever find footage of that, we want to see it. <laughs> Please share, Carson. Please share. <laughs> I think I've seen some before at my um, friend's house um, in, the, in his um, neighborhood on the sidewalk. Remember in really? Florida, I got stung by a bunch of fire ants in Florida. In Florida, on oh, my mom got stung by a bunch of fire ants. Stung, it'd be bitter stung. You know, uh, Harv, if there's time, I could tell one more story, and it's a fire ant story. Oh, yeah. All right. If you can be quick about it, I think we have time for one Ooh. more story. Okay, let's listen. Okay, well, um, so when we were kids... My cousins and my brother and I, we used to go to Florida to visit our grandparents. And we'd stay at places like Century Village, where there really isn't anything to do but get stung by fire ants. It's frozen. So we started off when we were younger 
We'd put our shoes in the fire ant nest and see who dared to hold it in the longest. Um, and then we'd take it out and we'd quickly try to brush off all the ants. But then as we got older, um, it moved on to bare feet and then eventually elbows, hands, wow, um, noses, tongues. And then my cousin won the game, Fire Ant Roulette, and we never played it again. <laughs> when he grabbed a giant handful of fire ants and just threw them down his pants. They <gasps> went like that. Oh my and we said, you know what? Jason, you win. You, win. <laughs> you have won this game. We're not yeah. playing this anymore. <laughs> just so you know, we at the Buzz do not endorse such behavior in no. any way, shape, or form. Right, Adam? No way. He for right. real had ants in his pants. <laughs> that was the last human to ever do that, and we decided that no humans would ever do that again. Exactly. No. Exactly. Good. Good call. No ants in the pants. That's our no motto for pants. today. No <laughs> ants in the pants. <laughs> well done, everybody. That was some fantastic reporting. And that's about all the time that we have today on The Buzz. But I want to give a big special thanks to all of our reporters, Xander, Woo. Uh, Livio, Carson, everybody did a, fa oh, Penelope, I'm sorry, Penelope had a fantastic story. Everybody did such an amazing job. I want to give a big thanks to all of those at Bug Bites and CoJoy and Make It There for their hard work. But I want you guys to stick around because CoJoy is coming up next right after some more creature making with Dave. <laughs> But we're going to do some robot <laughs> memories with Code Joy, and it's going to be a blast. So you've got to stick around for that. But I want you guys to tune in next week for another exciting episode of The Buzz. The Buzz. Head, head on over to our website, thebuzzpoint.com, if you want to share some more stories. All right, this is Harv Stickley signing off. Bye, bye. Bye, everyone. This is Adam signing off. They're going to have something else going on. He's just leaving. There's going to be more stuff. Okay. Clay Creature. All right. Hey. We can still play the rest of the day. Carson has the whole Welcome day. back to Clay Creature Request Line. Yeah. How's it going, Dave? Can Welcome you hear me? Clay. Hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you see the nine eyed spider? Ah, can nine eyed. We have Barbie clothes for you. Bobby clothes for me. Oh, oh wow. that's so oh. nice. Okay. That's a nice little number you got there. <laughs> Harv, you'd look great in that. I think I would. I have a little too many legs, but I'm sure we could just put some more holes in that. We could do some alterations. Yeah. Hey, Harv, if you ever want to put that on and feel like going and painting the town, let's go out. What? So, Dave, what, uh, what are we making today? You know, that's a great question. We're making whatever people request. So you guys have any cool requests for Dave? I like that request is outside. We've got a lace bug. We've got a nine-eyed spider. We've got a little lizard. I look at my, my mom says narwhal. A narwhal? We've got a, okay. A narwhal. A blue E to make the body of the narwhal. I know what I want to do. Yeah, I the data play yesterday on Dr. Sparks, there was kind of a narwhal, right? The uh, unicorn uh, seahorse thing. Yeah, it really? does sound like kind of a Dr. Sparks a thing. A unicorn. A horse. What is that? Just <laughs> just one horse? A yeah. unihorse, yeah. A single horse. <laughs> half unicorn, <laughs> half seahorse, half something, and half something else. Yeah, a half mermaid. And half, half mermaid, uh, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of halves. <laughs> How many halves does it Dr. take to make a hole? Dr. Sparks said let's add one more half. <laughs> Dr. Sparks added an extra half. <laughs> Mommy never to let Dr. Sparks cook any recipe or anything like that. <laughs> he will add several half cups. Dr. Sparks can't do. <laughs> All right, narwhal. I'm going from memory. Narwhals are pretty tubular. Tubular. Yeah, they're tub to totally tubular, man. Yeah, yeah, you're dating yourself again, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else is tubular? Tube worms. And that oh, tube top that Penelope's sharing that I might look pretty good in. 
We should do a whole day. I, I think that the, on tubes, the whole style telephone day to them. To begin with. Look at those pants. Those are fantastic. Tubularity. Maybe next week I'll be, uh, I'll have a new ensemble. Hey, uh, Dave, I want to see what you're doing. I can't see what I see you. Can you see me? You can't see my hands? There we go. That's what I wanted to see. All right. And it says T Nawal A M. Right. I used the E for our. It's T Nawal A M in the morning. <laughs> I think I might give our narwhal a candy cane <laughs> and white stripe. What is that that they have? Is it a a horn? Right. A horn. Oh it's yeah. A task. Is it two hours? It's actually a tusk, not a horn. A tusk, sorry. I don't, I'm not familiar with the mythos. It's actually a tusk that goes doing some, like, body. Is it possible that this narwhal hosts a morning show, a talk show, Dave? I think that'd be great. Uh, narwhal today. Yeah, T-A-M. You know a narwhal on a talk show would get to the point real fast. Ah! <laughs> what do you think he sounds like? Oh, well, what would a narwhal sound like? Well, he's also a radio host, so he's got to have a smooth voice. Maybe he is a Pokemon that says narwhal. You're right. He goes, narwhal, narwhal. Well, in the movie Elf, he said, bye, buddy. What if he sounded like? He's got to sound like he sound. He just says narwhal until he gets behind a microphone, and then he sounds completely unlike what he looks like. Just like every radio host, <laughs> just completely different. He's just like narwhal, narwhal. Then you put a microphone in front of him. He's like, hey, what's the rage that stays in place for days? It's T A M, the Stooge. <laughs> You are listening to NRWALL Cincinnati Narwhal. Smooth jazz. Good morning, Cincinnatians. This next one is. Can you make a shark? I can absolutely make a shark. I'm hiding everybody else. Make a fish after the shark. Make a fish that the shark is about to eat. Penelope has turned into an eagle. I want everyone to know this, and it is quite. Quite horrifying. <laughs> An American eagle. Am I doing a shark or am I doing a American eagle? You're doing a shark eating a fish. Oh, a shark eating a fish. Okie doke. I love that the Nawal is just flops down on the ground. <laughs> I didn't want to hang him up like this. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he's in the bait shop. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we're not. We're, 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 we throw back here. We don't fish for keeps. <laughs> if you oh, caught that, if you guys caught a narwhal while fishing, what would your response be? Would you throw it back or would you keep it? Giant fish with the little interesting lobes. How do narwhals taste? Does anybody know? Has anybody consumed one? Uh, I'd, no. I'd put the narwhal with the others in the swimming pool and yeah. build up our narwhal colony. Yeah. yeah. Then we'd always have footage for the buzz. That's right. Um, for some reason, it's saying that the host is inviting me to a breakout room. Oh, she, someone on our line is being invited to the breakout room. How should I? You should go. You should go to the breakout room if you're going to be a part of Code Joy. Yeah, go to the breakout room. Oh my gosh, you guys need to be part of Code Joy if you can. It's going to be awesome today. It's going to be how the kids say lit. Yeah, tubular is what they're saying. They think. Yeah, tubular. Lit, tubular, stellar, radical. Doesn't mean that it's going to be based on tubes or shaped like a tube. You don't know that. Maybe it is. Maybe we've been dropping hints this whole time. Yeah, I don't 
set up, set up any uh, false expectations about the shape of things to come. I like this shack. He's looking good. That's a nice. What is it? A dorsal fin? Yeah, he's got a nice. He's got his tail fin here. His dorsal fin there. What are the little side fins called? Side fins. Can you give them some? Do they have gills? They have to, right? I believe that sharks do have gills. Yeah. Sharks are amazing creatures. Can we name him Gil? Can we name him Gil? Hey, did they do Shark Week this year? Is that still a thing? Yeah, I think it's every year. Uh, on an undisclosed channel. Maybe we should do Shark Week. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. I'm sure we could figure something out. I'm sure bugs and sharks have something to do with each other. Yeah? Yeah. Imagine tiny on, sharks the size of bugs. We're going to do a little stretch break. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's. I don't know. I don't think sharks eat bugs. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, it's because we haven't introduced them. We can talk to them about it. Yeah. That is a great looking shark. Look at that. You even got that little fin on the bottom, didn't you? Yep. That's his rudder that keeps him upright. Is his name Finn or Gil? I think it's um Gil Finnegan. Gil Finnegan? That's the coolest name I've ever heard in my life. Pretty good name. Pretty good name for a shark, right? My is name he... is Harv Stickley. <laughs> so, the bar is pretty high. Let me see if I can get him to balance on his nose. Adam Lazarus used to be the coolest name I ever heard, and now it's Gil Finnegan. Amazing name. I like the way that shark is balancing on its nose. It's it a certain... Is, that shark. is it a bottlenose shark? Yeah. Yeah, it's a circus shark who balances on his nose. It's, it's a recently a hammered head shark. It's a yeah. hammered head shark. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of shark is a hammerhead shark. I'm surprised. That's I how hammerhead sharks are formed, right? They slam their faces onto the cement. That's yeah, they're born happens. looking like regular sharks, but they repeatedly swim into hard, flat objects. Yeah, or well, they they live near they they they, they see their reflection in the, in the glass. They try right. to give the shark a kiss, and then it flattens their nose. Those naturally occurring large flat glass panes in the ocean. Right. Where do you think we got glass? You think people made that? False. Oh, it's underwater Volcanic glass. Volcanic glass. But it comes out in thick rectangular panes, mm -hmm. and three and a half inch bulletproof plexiglass just comes right out of the volcano. Pops up, yeah. Windshield glass. <laughs> yep, this whole, that's the way it is with volcanoes now. All right, we've got a narwhal. We've got a balancing great blue shark. Can you make me really quickly a little hot dog? A tiny hot dog, yes I can. Because I'm hungry and I could Go for a tiny hot dog. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I've been thinking about lunch since before I got here. I've been thinking about lunch since breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I would not advise consuming this hot dog. Correct? No, you don't want to consume this hot dog unless you're a small person made from clay. I am a small person of sorts, and while I'm not made from clay, I am made. In Adobe Flash, is that what do you what do you think? Can I only eat Adobe Flash dogs? Well, yeah, that's interesting because Adobe is clay. Well, there you go. Oh. Yeah, it's the same thing. There might be some crossover there. Yeah, I'll let you know what happens, and hopefully, I won't have crippling bowel obstruction. Yeah, that's that's one of the things we're trying to avoid on this program. Crippling bowel obstruction. Yep. Is that? How high in a hierarchy is that in the in the Wait, goals of the show? That wasn't in your contract? No. Bowel obstruction, I missed that one. It might have been in the fine print. That's where we started. <laughs> what size was the font? It was just all on one page. It was just like, avoid bowel obstruction sign did here. You, did you see this tiny hot dog? I love it. Can you put a little relish on it for me? Yes. I was, uh, I'm thinking I might, um, which one of these creatures deserves this hot dog? 
I think probably hammered head shack by the narwhal that looks like he's kind of he may have passed. Yeah, maybe he's just famished. He's super exactly. hungry. You ever have a Chicago hot dog, Dave? Oh my god, I was just about to say, uh, this looks like a Chicago dog. That's so good, I think that's my favorite kind of hot dog ever. I had I've a Chicago had those. last week, actually. Oh, Adam, you are missing out. You asked Sounds the right like it. Chicago dogs. Yeah, what, what's all on there? There's a tomato on it, a pickle, tomato. bright neon green relish. There's bright green neon, neon green relish. There's um, uh, there's peppercinis. Yes. There's celery salt. Oh, celery salt is super important to it. You'd think it'd be like nothing, but it's like you can it's taste different. it. Yeah, Isn't it's there mustard little, on it too? There is mustard on it. And it's a sesame seed bun, correct? Like a sesame seed hot dog bun. Yeah, yeah, the one I the one I eat definitely had sesame seeds on it. It's so good, Adam. It's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna it really is my favorite. I really, this narwhal's come a long way. Can you see that? Look at this. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cute. He's eating a Chicago dog. Right, that narwhal. <laughs> whoever, saw, whoever saw a narwhal eat a Chicago dog? I have. I can. Once. I can. Yes, Just one time. Once. It's Just a great once. story. So there I was, watching my friend Dave. And we didn't we have bowel obstructions for kids. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice if these bowel obstructions looked delicious? <laughs> oh, my. I love this narwhal eating a, eating a Chicago dog. I think that should be your uh, your clay sona. That, should... oh, narwhal eating, eating. that might be a new hipster restaurant I open. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Narwhal eating a Chicago dog? Yeah. The whole restaurant. Narwhals you guys want to head to, what would the acronym be? N E A C D. You want to head to NEACD? So I was just interviewing. We can sell it. Interviewing means that you ask somebody a question. NEACD. I'm heading over to NEACD. You want anything? Yeah, everybody who works there has a sort of a narwhal hat they wear. Yeah, and the horn just gets in the way. No. Wouldn't it be cool if the narwhal, like the mascot, had the horn coming out, but it was just a big hot dog coming out, and it was like mustard on it? That'd be cool. Oh, uh, if the hat looked like this, if the hat was a narwhal head with a hot dog in its mouth. Oh, that'd be so cool. I could see that in the logo. Everybody would want to work there. <coughs> narwhal dogs. We could sell all kinds of dogs. It'd be so nice to everybody who worked there, too. They'd get free narwhal dogs on every shift. Have you ever had the... There's, there's like a Japanese one that they split it into a little octopus. Oh, no. It's really cool. I was looking at a chat the other day of a bunch of different hot dogs. I'm not sure why I stumbled upon that, but it was really cool. But the Chicago dog was easily the best out of the entire bunch. And if so, now, Harv, you're on the West Coast, right? Uh, right, right. Yeah, West Coast. <laughs> Hanging out with Adam. I was just thinking about your access to certain kind of hot dogs and foods that, that might be different from what I have over here in the East. Right. I am a big fan of East Coast dogs myself. But there's right, some stuff over here. Maybe we make dogs for lunch. I think that's a great idea. We need to make our own hot dog and then market that. That's, that's marketable. People have to eat. Yeah, I take all these ideas that you guys give me and I open up small businesses across the country. Very small. Small as in like <laughs> the size of that hot dog. Yeah, they last a week until the next show. How much would one of those very tiny hot dogs be? Oh boy. One of those tiny hot dogs. Uh, in real money, not clay money or Adobe money. Adobe dollars. You may want to package them and sell them in kits or even a subscription. I don't want to make it myself. I just want it to be made. That's why it's 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 about the we'll mail you simplicity. To, we'll mail you tiny hot dogs throughout the year. Okay, uh, listen, everybody. This was fun making narwhals and fish and lizards and talking about uh, different types of hot dogs. But it's time to transfer over to Kojoy. And I'll be here making clay creatures when you're done having fun at Code Joy. See you soon. You're on fire.
Neat transition, Dave. I like the puff of smoke. It was great. Yeah. So glad you're here. My name is Kelsey and I'm going to be your teacher for the next, oh, about half an hour um, at CodeJoy. We are an online um, robotics and coding school, sort of, camp, sort of, um, where we uh, engage students in coding and robotics. And so um, we also are live on Facebook and YouTube and a bunch of different places with Family Maker Camp right now. So if you are watching live on Family Maker Camp on any of those platforms, let us know, leave a comment, say hi, let us know what you think of our shows because we will shout you back out, all right? So today, it's not just me in the room though, we have a whole classroom full of students. Everybody wanna wave hello to everybody who's joined us on Family Maker Game, hello. Wonderful, and these students are gonna be helping us with a coding challenge today. So let me tell you about our coding challenge. Um, who here, raise your hand like so, if you like to write. Does anybody here like to write stories? Yeah? I know I do. Um, so yes, Levio likes to write stories, that's awesome. Um, so uh, I also like to write stories, and sometimes I like to write stories about my own life, sometimes I like to make up stories, and sometimes I like to write stories about other people's lives. That's called a biography, when you write a story about somebody else. And I have this really interesting friend that I want you guys to meet. Her name is Dottie, and she is a very, um, elderly robot. Another word for elderly is old. <laughs> she's a very old robot. She's been around for a very long time and she's led an incredible, amazing life. So uh, let's meet Dottie. Hey Dottie, how you doing today? All right, so you woke up with a little bit of knee pain, but you're doing pretty well now. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. Um, so Dottie, uh, I thought that we, me and my friends here on CodeJoy, could interview you a little bit today. So the word interview means to ask somebody questions to get them to talk about their lives. So that's something that you at home um, should be thinking of, is think of a question that you might want to ask Dottie to get her to talk about her life. And um, so I thought maybe I'd get us started. Dottie, uh, are, are you able to answer a couple questions? Do you want to talk a little bit? Okay, wonderful. Well, my first question for you is, can you tell me about a time when you felt love? Oh, you, you can't? Oh, are, are, you having, are you having some trouble remembering things today, Dottie? Yeah, oh, oh, uh, you know, that, that happens actually sometimes with older robots. Their, uh, their hard drives get corrupted, their memories get a little bit fragmented, and that's totally fine because we can help Dottie out today. So let me go to gallery view and check in with all of you. Give me a thumbs up. Are you ready to help Dottie retrieve some of her memories today? Yes, great, okay. So Dottie, can, can we start by just tell us what you remember, any little tidbits that you remember about a time when you felt a lot of love. Can you give us any details? Okay, great. So um, she said that, that there was, uh, she was feeling, uh, when she was feeling love, she was sitting on, on a hillside, she said, and there was a sunset and there were these birds going across the sky. So. Tell you what, let's go ahead and look inside Dottie's head and figure out, see if we can see this memory that she's got. All right, here we go. Let's dive into that memory. Oh, there it is. Can you guys see it? So inside that memory, see the two little robots? One of them is leaning their head on the other one's shoulder. Oh, that's so sweet. 
but it's really dark. Oh, do you see the birds in the sky back there? Those little triangles? I can almost make it out, but but Dottie, it looks like your your uh, your memory is just really dark. It looks like you need some help to bring it back to life. So that's what we're gonna do. So for those of you who have joined Microbit Classroom, I'm now gonna share some code with you on Microbit Classroom, and um, we're gonna share the some some code and then take a look at it. Um, so I'm gonna share this with Xander and Henry today. And we're gonna take a look at it. And I wonder, Matt, if you could also help us out and copy down those microbit classroom details so that Livio can join too. They were still looking for a, great, okay, wonderful. Um, so is gonna work on uh, joining because we're gonna put the microbit classroom join info in the chat, Livio and family, so that you can um, uh, join us, all right? But I just sent you guys some code, and that code controls a tri-color LED and a position servo motor, all right? So those are the two components, the two robot parts that are involved in this memory that we're gonna try and bring to life for Dottie. We're gonna try and revive this memory, all right? And what you guys need to do is you guys need to put some color in this memory, put some movement in this memory, because right now nothing's happening and it's all dark, because she's kind of forgotten pieces of it, all right? So um, we're just about finished sharing that info in the chat, and then I'll show you the code so you can see kind of what you can edit about it, all right? So here's the code that I sent everybody. And Livio, when you guys are able to join, I'll send that code to you too as well. I'll see when you've joined. So this is the code I shared with you. It's got a tri-LED, which is just set to zero right now. It's not, move, it's not lighting up or anything. And then we've got a position servo, which is just set to 90. So let me tell you what those things do. So a tricolor LED, it has three components in the colors. It's got red, blue, and green. And you can mix those colors together to make different colors. So you could mix red and blue together and get something like purple. You could mix blue and green together and you could get turquoise. You could mix red and green together and I wonder what you'd get. I wonder what you get if you mixed all the colors together. But they're just percentages. So to show you what I mean, I could go in here into the, um, into the code, and I could change this if I wanted it to be red. I could put 100% red. If I wanted it to be purple, I could put 100% red and, oops, 100% blue, and that would make it purple. And, and let me check back with you, Dottie. Can you tell us a little bit about the sky? Tell us about the sky in this memory. Oh, wow. She says it was neon colored with purples and pinks and blues. So I wonder if in the code, if you guys can mix some colors together, maybe even change the colors a little bit and make this sky show up as purples and blues and reds and pinks, all right? So the tri-LED is gonna control the sunset. And the position servo, that's the motor that's in there. The motor in this particular memory is going to control the birds flying across the sky. And so Dottie, can you tell us how did the, oh, let me tell you how a position servo works. It works like a protractor, like this. So it goes from zero to 180 degrees. And you can set it to any angle you want it to go to, and it'll stay there until you're, uh, you want it to go to a different angle. So you, right now, it's just set to 90 degrees, and then 90 degrees, and then 90 degrees. So it's just staying still. The birds aren't moving at all. So if you want the birds to move, you've got to change those numbers around. You've got to put some different numbers in there, something other than 90 degrees. If we want it to move, you've got to put some different numbers in that code. All right, and Dottie, let me check in with you. Um, uh, tell us how the birds were flying. Can you give us any other details about it? Oh, that's really pretty. She said the birds were sailing across the sky like a sailboat. That sounds lovely. I wonder if you guys can help with that in the coding. Now I'm gonna check in and see if Livio has been able to join yet. Not quite yet. Let me check in with you, Livio and family. Do you guys wanna still try and join our, our coding part of today? We tried and failed. Oh no! <laughs> Do we you guys don't know how, like, I even had experts here helping me and he failed Oh, too. I saw you brought in the, you brought in. <laughs> I brought in the computer crew. 
But I don't, know, we don't know how to get it. I don't know. Can you help us? Yeah, absolutely. So if you if you head back to your computer, take it to microbit.org slash join. Okay. All right, hold on. This is Hattie. Hello. Hattie. <laughs> Hattie's going to help us. I'm the geek support boy. I can't Henry and Xander, you guys can be coding, and when you're when you're ready, let me know, and we'll put some of your code on there. Right? I'm gonna get Levio. I'm gonna get Levio and family set up first, though. Cool. I'm gonna go to microbit.org/join. Right. And when you get there, it's gonna ask you for the class name. Is it ask, are there little drop-down menus on there? Yeah. Cool. So our class name is Yellow Lion Car Balloon. Yellow. Okay, we don't see yellow. There's no yellow. You might need to scroll down to find it. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yellow. Yellow. Yep. Lion. Lion. Car balloon. Car balloon. Ooh. Like a little puzzle. I know. Can you think of eight-year-old was going to do this? And then the pin. And the pin is eighty-seven, ninety-five, ninety-two. Sorry for holding up your class. No worries at all. It's class. This is, we don't leave anybody behind. We're Ohana today. I mean, spam. Right. Nobody gets left behind. <laughs> From Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> not Dottie, not Dave. Nobody. Okay, type in your name. Just leave you. Just put leave you. Oh, I'm so glad you're going to get on. This is great. Okay, continue. Click, click, click. Okay. okay. And then I'll see when you, hey, you popped up. Look. Yay. Thank you, Hattie. You did it. We all give you and family a round of applause. Ah, oh, bam. Way to go. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So now we are going to share this code with you, and we're just going to share it with Levio because I think Xander and Henry both have some code that they want to try out, right? Let's start with uh, let's start with Henry, and then we'll do Xander's, okay? All right. So Henry, we are going to download your code onto this robot. I'm going to plug it in so that we can... Uh, download this, download your code into um, Dottie's memory and do you unmute you and tell us what is, what is this code going to be like? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Big tension. Tell us about it, Xander. What's it going to be like? Can you unmute? What's it gonna do? You yeah, what's it gonna do? It's gonna make the birds fly and make the lights change colors. All right, let's check it out. All right, so let's go ahead and dive back into Dottie's memory. Here we come, Dottie. Diving back into this memory. Here we are. Xander, you see the sunset? Do you see the birds moving? Yeah. Oh my goodness. You did a great job. Looks good. Dottie, does this look like the memory that you remember? It does. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Xander, nice job. You helped Dottie get back her memory, and it's just like she remembered. I wonder, Henry, do you have some, uh, do you have some code that you want to put on, too? Okay, we're going to work on getting your code on there next. But look at this. Do you want to see something? Dottie, your memories are coming back to you. Do you see how the pictures are even becoming like your memories? Yeah. All right, so Henry, we're going to try putting your code on there. But before we do, Xander, you got, you got something to do. You, you've got a job to do right now, which is you get to ask Dottie a question. All right? So you get to ask Dottie a question. What question do you want to ask Dottie? You get to interview her, her to ask her to talk a little bit about her life. I asked her to tell me about a time when she felt love. What do you want to ask her? Um, when did you have kids? Oh, that's a really good question. Let's come over and we'll spotlight us and uh, we'll ask Dottie. Hey, Dottie, did you ever have any kids? Ooh, 
Oh, that's interesting. She said, no, she never had any kids. But uh, especially when she got older, the block that she lived on, all the kids that lived on that block, she kind of went and like adopted them. And they all kind of became like her grandkids. I wonder if you guys have an older person like that in your life who's not your family, but who kind of feels like your family. Hear about that. All right. So, Henry, we have your code on our robot now. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tell us, what is this, um, what is this uh, code going to do? Describe it for us. It's going to make the lights change um, to... Um, the pause is going to be really fast and the lights are going to change colors and the birds are going to move. And the birds are going to move. All right, let's try it out. All right, Dottie, we're going to dive back into your memory. Here we come. birds moving through the sky. Look at that sunset, Henry. Wow. What all colors did you put in there? I'd love to take a look at your code. Dottie, do you want to take a look at the code red as well? And blue. Red and blue. I put and oh. first red and blue and then I put red and I mean, green and blue. Oh, I see. Yeah, red and blue, so purple. And then green and blue so turquoise that looks really cool that looked really really cool in that memory and then let's see what you did for the position servo oh good you made some different angles in there that's great so that the birds were moving around a little bit that's wonderful so now henry you get to ask Dottie a question now you get to interview her to get her to talk a little bit about her life what question do you want to ask Dottie? what um what was your life like when you were a kid? Can you say that one more time, Henry, really loud? What was your life like when you were a little um, robot? Oh, that's a great question. So Henry asked, what was your life like when you were a little robot? Can you tell us a little bit about that, Dottie? Oh, that's great. She said that one of her favorite memories from when she was little is a Christmas memory because her family celebrates Christmas. And um, she uh, it was gathered around the Christmas tree and she remembers taking one of the bows off of one of the presents and putting the bow on her head. Have you ever done that, Henry, taking a bow off of a present and putting it on your head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. That's good because you're a good person. Good, good yeah. people do that. That's right. Okay, wonderful. Well, so we've brought one memory to life. And Dottie, how are you feeling now about your memories? Okay, great, great, great. You're feeling a little bit more confident. So I have another interview question for you as well. And we'll see if this triggers another memory. So my question for you, Dottie, is tell me about a time when you felt an overwhelming sense of wonder. When you just felt, oh, you felt so small and you felt so much wonder looking at the world. Can you tell me something about that? Oh, no. Are you having trouble remembering again? Well, listen. I think my friends are pretty good coders now. I bet they can help, actually. So uh, let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this memory, um, just how it is right now. And let's see if we can, if we can get any details about it. So um, Dottie, we are going to dive into a memory. Can you tell us anything at all about it? Can you tell us even just the, the tiniest little detail about it? OK. Yeah, those are some good details. Okay, so, so Dottie said there that she was swimming in the ocean. She was snorkeling. And the water was this beautiful turquoise, turquoise color? Yeah, turquoise. And um, 
and and she was like floating in the water, but but she can't remember everything about it. So I'll tell you what, let's dive into this memory and see if we can take a look at it. something. Oh, there she is. I see Dottie. She's got her snorkeling gear on and I, I see the blue water, but it's not very alive. There's not much going on there. Dottie, can we help you out? Can we try to bring this memory to life? Okay, great. All right, so the details, you guys have that same code. I'm not going to send you anything new. I just want you to change what you've got because this memory the water, she said, was turquoise, turquoise in color. So can you think of what two colors you might need to mix to make turquoise? And you can unmute. Green and blue. Green and blue, that might make turquoise. But you could put other colors in there as well. So in that code, when you're, when you're mixing colors for your tri-LED, you probably want to mix green and blue. But you could put them at different levels. You could make it more green and less blue or more blue and less green. You can mix those around a little bit to make the water kind of feel like it's moving. And then Dottie said that she was drifting through the water. So this motor, um, so the, the tri-color LED will control the color of the water, and the motor will control the little scuba diver in the back there, kind of drifting slowly back and forth. So there's a way to slow a motor down. Um, but what we really want her to do is, right now, she's just standing still, but she said in her memory she was drifting back and forth through the water. So I wonder if you can do that with, our, with your motor blocks, all right? And let me check in with you, Livio and family. So you guys were able to get on. Do you feel like you know what to do to, to adjust some of the code to change things? Not very much? You're, you're muted, but feel free to unmute. And I figured if I'm good, no, I, we have no idea what we're doing. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. That's, we're here to learn. This is perfect. I'm so glad. So what you guys are going to be doing in that code, did you get the code? Are you <laughs> Okay, so now we have a problem because now our screen, we lost where we were with the code and it just went away. And yeah. I don't know. Code on your screen and your tabs? <laughs> yeah. Totally it. Oh, then. <laughs> <laughs> no worries wow. at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I have the too many tabs probably all the time. Well, well I never use this computer, so I, I, I don't even use a computer. Hold on. Let me try to figure out where did it go? Okay. Can you tell me again what, what the site we were on? It's a micro bit. So it's got a little green, uh, a green sort of circular icon on top. And it's okay. Hold on. I got it right here. Right here. All right. In the yellow lion balloon car something yellow lion. A yellow lion car balloon. We failed it. Okay. Pin. Uh, 87, 95, 92. Wait, 86, 95, 92? 87. Uh-huh. 95. 92. And then 92, yep. Okay. We should just watch this part. All right. Okay, we're, we're trying it out. Now you guys will be ready for next time. You'll, you'll be like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll be proud of this. <laughs> All right, you too. I need you to pay for <laughs> um, Find my name. Yeah, you can find yourself and you can rejoin and, and get that whatever you're working on back. Stop it. When yeah. you do, you come back on. But it says, I'm putting Levio. Oh, right here. Okay, no. I think I'm going to tell Carson to go. Back. I see. Okay, now we're back. Ready, Levio? Yeah. Yes. So then in that code, let me, uh, you should still have that code there. Um, or we'll send it to you again so you've got it. But in that code, you're, uh, the things that you can kind of play with are you can mess around with the numbers in there and change some of those like uh, red, green, blue numbers to, to be different things. And then when you're ready, wave your hand when you want to try something and we'll try your code on our okay. robot. 
Okay. All right, it's still loading. All right. Cool. Well, when you guys are ready, let me know. And Xander, it looked like you are ready. You've got some code to try. Yes? Yes. All right, You're Xander. Gonna switch the code on here once it loads, okay? Right. All right, so um, Xander, tell us, what is your code going to do? Change the color of the water. Uh, what's it going to do, Xander? Can you tell me one more time? Um, the water is going to change color. And um, she's going to move. OK. The water is going to change colors, and Dottie, the robot, is going to move. All right. I'm very excited to see what it's going to look like, Xander. Um, and start thinking of another question for Dottie, too. All right, it's not ready yet, but OK. Oh, it is ready, actually. All right, Dottie, we're going to dive back into your memory. So we're going to come spotlight ourselves up here again. And there we go. Oops. OK, Dottie, we're going to dive back into your memory. Here we come. Turquoise water. Look at Dottie swimming around back there. Did it work like you thought it would? Yeah? I see you nodding your head yes. Dottie, does this look like your memory that you remember? It does. That's amazing. Nice job, Xander. You brought her memory back to life. That is wonderful. And now what you get to do, Xander, is you get to ask Dottie another question about her life. Have what, you what? ever climbed a tree? Have you ever climbed a tree? Ooh, that's a really interesting question. Um, Dottie, have you ever climbed a tree? <laughs> that's a crazy story. She said, yes, she's climbed a tree. And she said when she got up to the top, it grew a face and it started talking to her. And it said its name was Grandmother Willow, and it told her, it told her all the wisdom of the trees. That's a pretty great uh, story. I love that. It makes me want to climb trees. <laughs> um, Henry, is your code ready? Do you want us to put that on our robot? Great. Yeah. All right. We're going to work on that now. And my question for you, Henry, is what's this code going to do? What's it going to look like? So I put um, 100 blue and... Um, a few more green, and then I put 19 red. Oh, you put some red in there, too. What color? This is a really interesting question, actually. When we put green, oops, that's green. When we put green and blue and red together, if we put all of those in there, what color do you think would be in the center? White. White? How did you know that, Henry? Because I've learned it on videos. <laughs> Oh, because you learned it on videos. You're right. Now, do you, got, do you know what happens, you or Livio or Xander, do you know what happens if you have a bunch of paint and you mix all the colors of paint together? What color do you get? Brown. Brown. Yeah, you're totally right. So light is different from pigment. Um, it has to do with reflection and wavelengths and things like that. But I, I teach a lot of adults, actually, and they don't know what you know, Henry. They did not know that when you put all the colors together, you get white light. But I think we're ready to dive into this memory and see what Henry's code looks like. All right, Dottie, here we come. We're coming into your head. Into that memory. Here we go, Henry. This is what your code looks like. What do you think? Does it look like you thought it would? Yeah, because yeah. I thought it would be a bit brighter because I put some red. Because, ah, I thought it might be a little brighter than that. Because, like, um, the um, green, because the red, and eh, because all the colors make white, so mm. I thought it would be bright. Because I thought it might be brighter. So if light. you were to do it again, you might put some more white in there. Yeah. Dottie, d does it, do you think it needs to be brighter, or, or do you like it how it is? Dottie said it was really deep where she was diving, so it was actually pretty dark. So the code that you wrote, Henry, actually is pretty perfect. That reminds her of her memory a lot. So now you get to ask Dottie a question, Henry. 
What question do you have for Dottie about her long and amazing life? Um, what was your favorite um, food? What was your favorite food? Ooh, that's a good question. Dottie, what was your favorite food? Okay, sure. Uh, she said her favorite food was pickles stuffed with olives in ice cream? Yeah. Hey, it's your favorite food, Dottie. I'm not going to, I've heard, I heard this term recently. I'm not going to yuck your yum, which means I'm not going to tell you what you like is bad, but I'll say that when I come over, I'll bring my own dessert. I'll put it that way. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. So, um, we have gotten to help Dottie with her memory. Let me check in with you, Livio. Livio, did you, did you try out some code? Do you want us to put some of your code on this robot? Uh, you, can you unmute yourself so we can hear you? Um, this is what it's doing. It's weird. Uh, flip around. Oh, it's like not opening for you. Yeah, and it's been stuck like that for like 20 minutes. Oh, darn it. I'm so sorry about that, Livio. We will we'll try and troubleshoot later to see if we can figure out what went wrong there. But mm -hmm. let me give you a chance to ask Dottie a question. What question do you have for our elderly, interesting robot friend about her life? She's had such a long life. What do you want to know? Um, have you ever swam to the bottom of the ocean? That is a really interesting question. Dottie, have you ever swam all the way to the bottom of the ocean? You have? What? That's insane. It's so deep. How did you get down to the bottom of the ocean? That sounds like quite a contraption you built that like dove and came up and went down and uh, they even wrote a book about it, 40,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh, wow, that's amazing. You've led such an amazing life, Dottie. Let me check in with you. How are you feeling now, Dottie? Do you feel a little bit more connected to your memories? Oh, you, you sound so lively. You sound like so much better than you did when we came upon you this morning. Uh, what stories has this inspired you to write about your life, Dottie? Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, gosh. So the, the time you got carried away by balloons and you discovered a new species of bird? The, the time that you body swapped with John Malkovich? The time that you first flew across the Pacific Ocean and didn't crash? The, the time that you destroyed the One Ring by throwing it into the Mount of Doom? Wow. Uh... Those are really great stories, Dottie. I can't wait to hear all of your stories. Make sure that you've got a computer handy so that you can write them all down, all right? Or, or maybe just a paper and pencil, whatever you prefer. And I hope that you guys go out and you write some of your own stories so that you don't forget. You're so mean. Don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Wonderful. We're back. Sorry, we were frozen for a second there. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our coders and learners and interviewers today. So everybody here, give yourselves a round of applause. Very nicely done. And one last thing. Everybody reach your hand out in front of you like this. Reach your hand out, reach your hand out, reach your hand out. Now give yourselves a pat on the back. Because you guys did great. Nice coding today. Nice interview questions. Did you see how excited Dottie was at the end? That was really cool to see how she opened up. That's awesome. Um, so what we are going to do next is Dave is going to come back with the clay creature request line. And Yay! Then, yeah! I love Dave. Dave is the best. I wish I had a mustache like Dave. <laughs> but... Um, uh, so we're going to have the clay creature request line for a couple minutes, and then we're going to come back with typewriter stories. And we hope that you all stay on because we want to tell one big giant story to go uh, th uh, to tell a story about everything that you saw and learned and experienced on the Anything Place shows today. So anything from bug bites, from Martian explorations, from Code Joy, anything that you that you saw Dave make, we wanna make a big story about all of those things in typewriter stories. So without further ado, we'll kick it over to Dave. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you to Maker, Family Maker Camp for having us this weekend. Take it away, Dave. Absolutely, absolutely, thank you.
Kelsey. Kelsey. You have to love that, Kelsey and Code Joy. What a fun episode. Those robots, those robots have so many problems they have to work through, but these kids keep working with them and, uh, and, and helping them get to where they need to be. I'm having a great time watching it all happen here. Kelsey, the team from uh, the, the, the team from the Buzz, uh, Dr. Sparks, it's a blast. It makes Saturday so much fun to look forward to. Sometimes I just hit the fog machine like this, just for no good reason at all. Just because it's so fun and mysterious and mystical. But you know what's really straightforward is Clay Creature Request Line. So if you want to send us a request, a suggestion, an idea for what I should make from Clay in the chat, you can even call, hello, you can even call my request line phone. You could uh, send us a letter. Uh, if you know where we are, you could have a neighbor stop over and tell us what you want us to make out of clay. These are some examples. The smoke machine's gonna stop eventually. Um, so you'll be able to see me clearly. And it's pretty clear that our creatures right now are having a hot dog party. It's summertime, it's summer vibes. We've got a shark eating a hot dog, a lizard eating a hot dog, uh, a, a rubber ducky eating a hot dog. The narwhal is the one who really got us started because the narwhal uh, said he never had a Chicago dog uh, because narwhals aren't from anywhere near Chicago. So we said, well, man, you've got to try that. Uh, it's not really East Coast, not West Coast. It's, it's the middle of the country. Chicago, Chicago dog. And you can see it's got all the right ingredients on it. Ladybug's got a hot dog, but she seems overwhelmed because she's got a tiny mouth, and how are you even going to eat the hot dog? You're a ladybug, you eat aphids. Um, and then the very first creature we did today was the nine red-eyed daddy long leg spider. And, um, you know, nobody gets left out here at the anything place. Everybody gets a hot dog. And um, I made a little hot dog creature. You know, we talk about bugs and creatures so much on this show, on these shows that we all hang out. I thought, you know oh, what? That's hey, a good uh, idea. Oh, uh, man, I love good ideas. Lay it on me. So, make a dancing hot dog with a smiley face um, into a um, claymation video. And oh, then I'm... put it up on the next time we do Clay Creature Request 9. That's a cool idea. I wish we had time to do animations on the show, but that doing a stop motion animation Hello. A, a really long time. But I can definitely build a hot dog I'm with back. a smiley face who likes to dance. In fact, that's a fantastic idea. I'm surprised they haven't already done that. What is that? Um, what is that creature you've made there? A, a hot dog bug you've made there, Dave? It's, it's, it's a hot dog bug. You might be able to see it better on this screen. Let's check it out. Oh, wow. See, it's got six legs, so what kind of a hot dog bug, what kind of a bug would a hot dog bug be? That is a, uh, a native wiener bug. That's <laughs> a Coney Island wiener bug. Yes, a brat gnat. <laughs> brat gnat. Oh man, that's that's terrific. That's that's why I like working with uh, the guy from the bu the the friends friends from the buzz. We know we know all the scientific names for the Madagascar wiener bug, the brat net, not to be confused with the brat pack. <laughs> the cabasa. from your era, Dave. <laughs> right, that's the truth. We have the kabasi crawlers. The Kabasi crawlers, yeah. Mm hmm. Kishka flies. <laughs> Pork bugs. There you go. Bugs, I like that. All right, now I'm making the bun. Pork bugs are just pig. What was that? I heard pigs. Pigs in a blanket, maybe. Oh, pigs in a blanket. Pigs in a blanket, bugs. Make a pork bug, which is that's a pig. <laughs> what well, kind of uh, condiments are you going to put on this hot dog, Dave? You know, I think this hot dog is going to have a traditional red and yellow stripe. I think that'll fit. Absolutely. Good, good call. Good call. 
I think that's now, a, that? a kind of hot dog hot book. Dog. They release these condiments when they feel threatened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here comes the bigger version. And I'm going to steal a little yellow clay from this duck. Pardon me, ducky, but I need a little piece of you to make some mustard. And these are the kind you of things to say duck. out loud. You it's make duck it. sauce. It's duck sauce. It's duck mustard. Exactly. Man, you guys are making me really hungry. I know. I really want some Chinese food and some hot dogs. Yeah, I want some fusion. I want some Chinese food hot dogs. I want the duck sauce broth. Look at that. That kind of looks like the narwhal horn. It does. It's a similar method to to spinning clay That's together so the same way you make a candy. <laughs> All right, now we need to give it some eyes, right? Yep. E Y E. E Y E. That's right. Good oh, spelling there. Give... I'm going to give it green pickle eyes. Pickle eyes. That's awesome. Mhm. Mm Man, everything we talk about is make, making me hungry. I know. We need to stop making food and start making stuff that would turn my stomach. We need to make, like, a toilet and a toilet make brush. It, We're getting it all mixed stomach. up, though. Yeah, we, we talk about bugs and food so much. You uh, are you implying that do bugs make you hungry, Dave? You know, they eat bugs in some parts of the world. Okay, I'm going to be real with you guys. I got a fun story while he's making these eyes. I I was messing around on Facebook the other day, and a video popped up into my feed, all right? And now I want you guys to keep in mind I was just very hungry already. And so it was about this indigenous tribe, and they would catch grasshoppers just by the pound. And then they would saute them get them all brined up and then cook them and they looked so delicious and i know that sounds like cannibalistic for me but i was <laughs> really really hungry and i couldn't believe it i was actually hungry after having watched it they just put like garlic and all sorts of good seasoning on it Dude, you ever see something like that it was, in the it was a bug hot dog a bug dog hot bug dogs wow <laughs> I have seen that, and it, 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 it didn't look bad. I got to admit, it didn't look bad. You know bad. the real version of a hot dog? It's just a dog that's on fire. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you guys that think we can't share. This living dog. Should I give the hot dog a hot dog to eat, or is that just too much? Hold on. I didn't. We didn't see it, Dave. I want to see it. Oh, Maybe he's up here. Can make an actual he's hot dog my, my a dog on fire. Oh, wow. He's cute. He's He's standing next to the rubber ducky. Oh, 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 Dave. How about we give him a... What I'm going to make is... Yeah. Sun. A sun. A sun? What were you going to say? Make I a dog that's on fire. To make a sun. Who's, who's the father? A sun like a little boy hot dog? Or like the sun, the fiery, gaseous star? Um, the second one. We want to no. give. Oh wow! What? Do we want. We want to make a. We want dog a sun. A sun. Like, like, like the normal sun, that like a bright sun. Yeah, the gaseous oh, spatial body. Yeah, Actually, I got you. That's a great maybe idea. Maybe you should make Luke Skywalker. That'd be cool. Oh. I think that's an interesting idea. I like the I like your idea of the sun first. Let me start there. Maybe I can I can make it a sun that has a face. Can you give him sunglasses like mine? Oh, absolutely. That that reminds me of um. Where have I seen a sun wearing sunglasses before? The sky. I know I've seen it somewhere. Up in the sky. You know, I'm so bright, my father that calls me so son. Bright that <laughs> it, it's on a box of raisins, man. To wear glasses, even if only it's That's so what it is. <laughs> yeah, can you give him two scoops, Dave? <laughs> I'm going to give this guy two scoops. 
and use a. I guess um, I, I just keep looking for sponsorships. And then make ice cream in each of the same cans. So, because. Oh, wow. That it needs to eat ice cream. All right, let me catch up on the first part. Bike Reaches is brought to you by Raisin Brand. Brought to you in part by Raisin Brand. I can live with that. I wouldn't mind being paid in Raisin Brand. I love Raisin Brand. Why doesn't anybody like Raisin Brand? I don't know. More people should like it. Maybe, maybe this is where the movement starts. It might be the brand they object to. Look what ah. we have. <laughs> what you got there, Penelope? Oh, what is it? Is that a bug encased in amber? No, it's a bug inside of glass. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's horrifying. <laughs> you showed me the corpse of one of my friends. Thank you for that. I had one of those when I was a little kid. I, I love that thing. That's kind of like what they did to Han Solo. They put him in carbonite, I right? I think that glass would be able to break, but I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully I've not. never ever know. seen glass break in my life. <laughs> I, I think it's impossible. What? <laughs> How many windows have you jumped through? I yeah. think I've seen right, I'm going to stay. Glass. Goodbye, and thank you for hanging in there and making creatures and hot dogs with me. We're about to bump over to Dr. Sparks. Hi, Dr. Sparks. You ready to see Dr. Sparks? He's ready to see you. Good job today making clay creatures. And I'll see you. Hi, Dr. Sparks. Very soon. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome! I'm Dr. Sparks and this is Typewriter Stories. Let's go and get right to it. <laughs> I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a jetpack and some fuel. Cause we're going up high, high in the sky. Come on up for a ride with your good friends at your side. Imagination is your guide, cause it's Dr. Sparks, science story typewriting time. Hello everyone and welcome! I am Dr. Sparks and this is Typewriter Stories. Every single day of the week, Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, except for next week because I'm taking next week off, I lead a celebration of the creativity and storytelling of children. So I've got this thing here. It's a typewriter, a mechanical behemoth. And I use it to come up with a series of stories with my guests. And then I type up the stories along with my guests. And then our illustrator, the indefatigable Cecilia Oliveira Hillway, brings these stories to life with pen and ink and watercolors. <laughs> oh my gosh, Cecilia. And right now, here we are in the midst of a narwhal eating a hot dog and Dottie at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Inspired by Dave. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it is spectacular. It is so great. <laughs> now friends, you've all been on this call for quite some time and we've gone a lot of places. We went all the way to Mars and came back, thank goodness. And then we went and met some bugs with, Co with the Buzz and with Adam and Harv, that sick bug, that trickster, he's always causing trouble, always misunderstanding what bugs are up to. And then we learned all about Dottie and her memories with Code Joy. And here we are with typewriter stories. And of course, Dave, and every gap in between those shows was creating great clay creatures. Uh, and, and smoke, too, with his, his smoke machine, of course. <laughs> so guys, I now have a challenge for you. We need to come up with some stories together. And I'm hopeful that we can incorporate some of the elements of what has happened today into our stories. I've got a blank sheet of paper. Our word of the day today is tacky. <laughs> <laughs> And let's try to come up with some stories, eh? Now, before we get underway, I just want to say one more thing, and that's if you like what you're seeing here, you can go to drsparks.com, sign your kid up for a future episode, and also you can become a Patreon subscriber there, or else throw us a tip through the link that's there as well. Now, let's go ahead and get right to it. Guys, we got to come up with this story. What are we going to do? What is the uh, beginning of our tale? Anybody have an idea what we should write about? Um. Uh, there's a squirrel in my 
Ninja. It's a squirrel, a mouse, and a ninja? Is that what I heard? No. There's a squirrel in my window. Oh, there's a squirrel in your window! Is it a spy? Is it some sort of nefarious representative of... I think it might be trying to look for a way to get onto my bird feeder without making it um, stop working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Xander and Penelope, can we can we go with that? Do you think could we have this squirrel scheming and plotting and trying to come up with a way to steal the bird seed from the bird feeder? Because my bird feeder um is squirrel um, because if there's too much weight, it would just fall down and then it would block the bird feeder. Stealing the hummingbird food. They're trying to steal the hummingbird food? <laughs> okay. I'm down for that. Okay. So, um how about this? Outside, oh dear, <laughs> outside Henry's window was a squirrel. And the squirrel, um, the squirrel is hungry and is planning to steal the food. So, what kind of a plan do you think that these uh, that a squirrel might come up with? Keep in mind that squirrels. I think offer... squirrels trying to get, trying to catch birds to, um, and trying to find a bag, um, and um, have the birds fly the bag with him inside of the. Um, inside of the bag and then the birds carry him over to the bird feeder and then he eats the bird seed while the birds have to keep him up. Yeah, I love that idea. So so the, the, the squirrel is trying to capture birds and thankfully it's not trying to capture these birds by uh, eating them, you know, to eat them or something like that. No, no, the squirrel has much better plans for these birds. He's gonna James and Giant peach them up. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that book, but he's going to attach strings to these birds and use them as a method of propulsion and buoyancy and rise into the air under the wings of these birds. I don't know. Penelope, can you, can you see that happening? Do you, think, do you think that a bird, a bunch of birds could pick up a squirrel and carry it into the air? What about, what about a hawk? That's sad. A hawk. <laughs> a hawk! Okay, so bird after bird. Um, okay. So, Henry, I need one more thing, though. What is, do you think, what is the squirrel using to lure the birds to the yard? Is well, it just here? I know that all of my birds know about the bird. All of the birds that are here know about the bird feeder. So, I think maybe the bird feeder, I mean, the birds, the squirrel is going to try to, lure the birds into the bird. Ah, I love it. I love it. So here's what I'm seeing. Every single day, this squirrel is looking out at all of the birds that are just stuffing their faces. Well, they don't... They, do birds have faces? Birds have faces. Stuffing they their faces with seeds. And, 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 and this is an unusual bird feeder. Uh, Henry has excellent taste in, in, in bird seed. And actually, some of the seeds are shaped like little hot dogs. And some of them are shaped like little novelty narwhals. Um, and so these birds are just like eating all this ridiculous bird seed and the squirrel is jealous and the squirrel is hungry and the squirrel begins to plot and scheme how he is going to get that bird seed for himself. So he watches and one day the birds are flying as they always do to catch the bird seed. But this time, every single time a bird lands, something happens. Penelope, if you were a squirrel trying to capture a bunch of birds, what would you use to, to capture them? Would you use a lasso or a net maybe? Or what do you think? I would just jump over them and catch them. That's a great idea. But Penelope, do you have an idea? Um, um, a net. A net! Oh, that's excellent. Well, maybe we can combine those two. So we could use a net that you kind of have to jump over and catch. So we, we've got a net here. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is imagine this. So the squirrel is watching. And he's and got his... The net is like attached to your belly and you have to jump over the bird. Okay. <laughs> the net. net is attached 
to your belly and you have to jump over the bird. Okay. Uh, okay. So the squirrel, he's got one end of the net in one hand, one of the net in another hand, one end attached to his belly button. Uh, maybe he's got like a belly button piercing, I guess, that's holding onto it. Um, or no, no, he's got a tail, doesn't he? So the, the tail is holding it and at the level of his belly button. And the squirrel sees a bird land, the first bird. This is a little morning dove that's going. <whistles> Well, that morning dove is about to get hit with a net. And here he goes. Ah! There's a poof of feathers. And now the bird emerges covered with strings and net wires and twine. And the, the morning dove is now mourning and sad. And it very sadly goes. So sad, this poor bird. But it's now part of something bigger than itself. Before its life had been lived for itself. The bird thought of nothing but to eat and to find a mate and to make a nest and all the things that birds do. Now though, it's part of a scheme. Now it's part of an enormous plan. It's part of the squirrel's plan to get this bird seed. So another bird swoops down. This time it's a hawk that wants to try to eat the morning dove. And so it goes, Meah! and lands right next to the dove. And it's gonna land on the dove, but the squirrel pulls it out of the way at the last second. Throws another net once again with its hands and its tail over its belly button and whoo! And now the hunter has become the hunted because you know, hawks are great predators. So now the squirrel has a morning dove and a hawk. And what other birds might a squirrel capture around Henry's bird feeder? Henry, do you have an idea? Or Penelope, do you have an idea? Because hummingbirds um, can stay in like up in the air. So they could eat the bird seed for longer. It makes sense, yes. They can hover in one place in a way that the other animals cannot, or the other birds cannot. Back to Spox, back to Spox, I have an idea. Yes, tell me how, I, I need to hear this idea. How about, how about an owl? Those like to hunt things. Oh, yeah! That mean owl. Uh, I could be an owl. Okay, uh, give, me, give me your best owl, Harv. Ooh, ooh, I am the mighty owl. <laughs> Was that terrifying? Too terrifying? Uh, guys, what do you think? Were you, were you terrified? Woodpeckers! Woodpeckers! <laughs> well, now we got a proper aviary. So we got a morning dove. We got a hawk. We got an owl. Ooh, 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 ooh. Actually, we have an owl. Where's, uh, where's the owl? Okay, can you give me the owl box? We have an owl. <laughs> we have an entire swarm of hummingbirds who move like bees in coordinated action. These are like synchronized swimmers of the, of the you know, they're, they're flying around. This is my oh, best hummingbird. Mr. Sparks, I just noticed that you're not typing anything. <laughs> I'm not. I'm being lazy, aren't I? <laughs> But you see, sometimes it's so important to bring these stories to life and, you know, make sure that this owl is properly, uh, you know, uh, 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 bound and tied up so that he can actually fly into the sky and carry us far, far away. So we'll, we'll put him up here where he can, he can carry us. Huh? There. <laughs> He's out of the way now. Okay, so now this squirrel has an entire aviary of birds. No, like a flock of flocks. I don't even know what the meta flock name is there, but so many birds and they all begin to fly through the air and Henry's pointed out and being very uh, undiligent with my typewriter. So let's write some of this down. The aviary of birds alighted and flew off into the sky. Uh, but now that the squirrel had a taste of power, now that the squirrel had seen his scheme brought to fruition, now that he'd actually done something cool, he didn't want to give up the birds. He now had a taste for bigger things than just bird seed. He wanted power. So he continued to kidnap these birds and to add them to his, like, you know, chariot of flying animals that were carrying him higher and higher. And if you had access to thousands of birds that would carry you anywhere you wanted to go, does anybody have an idea of what you would do with them or where you would go? Penelope, you got an idea? Thousands of birds of all species, even some penguins, which is tough because they actually don't add anything to the whole flying thing. I'm going to uh. steal all the candy. All the candy! The squirrel was out! And with his flock of birds, he began to steal all the candy in the world. First place they hit was Mars, Pennsylvania, where they hit the old Mars candy factory. Stole all that candy. Whatchamacallit factory was next. Then Payday, Twix, Skittles, M&M, one by one. The citadels of candy fell. 
before the mighty squirrel and his army of birds. What other kinds of candy are there that we are missing right now? Twix. Twix. Oh, next was the Twix factory. Milky and, uh, Ways. Milky Ways as well. <laughs> well, there was some confusion there. And at one point, the birds actually ended up in the sky. They were confused about the difference between the bar. Twizzlers, of course, yes. Skittles. Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, listen, guys. Did they did they go to Charleston for the chews? Yes, Charleston chews and some Laffy Taffy. I've got one. How about hot tamales? Ooh. Uh, not hot. Tamales. Those are gross. What's the point of all favorite candies? I'm not going to yuck your yum. <laughs> what about black licorice? Yeah, dark licorice. Oh, I love it. Okay. Uh, sure. <laughs> Werther's? If we're saying gross candy types, I can throw out some, too. <laughs> I thought, I thought <laughs> more All right. We're getting distracted from the story, though, here. Eric <laughs> Squirrel. He's kidnapped thousands of birds at this point. About 30% of the birds in the world uh, are now under his beck and call. And the rest of the birds are nervous. Um, there's flamingos in his menagerie now. All these animals. They've stolen most of the world's candy supply. The only place left to hit is the strategic supply of the United States candy supply. The army in the 80s during the Cold War decided that they needed to make sure that in case the Russians ever did anything nefarious, there was enough candy to keep us alive through a nuclear winter. So, in Nevada somewhere, there's this huge stockpile of gold coins, chocolate gold coins and chocolate oranges, and also there's Kinder Eggs, you know? The best candy in the world, everybody knows. Guys, That's how would you break into, a, like, a U.S. government stockpile of candy? Well, if you had thousands of birds with your army, uh, would you use, like, some coding maybe to do that? Or maybe a clay creature friend? Or maybe... I would, what, use, you know, like I would uh, pick up some of the bird seed with my shovel and I would um and they eat all the candy and, I would candy and the, eat the, all um, bird the seed. toys and then I would point it where I wanted the birds to go but the birds would think that the bird seed was just floating and the birds would try to get the bird seed but they would just keep going forward and then also and then well, and then once I got there, I would just drop the bird seed onto the um, ceiling, and then I would um, use my hammer and shovel to dig into the ceiling, and then get inside of the. Um, inside I love it. Of I love it, and you're fortunate. The, the the birds that our squirrel had kidnapped didn't include any ravens or any other of the corvid family. Those are very intelligent birds. So these were other all fairly dumb birds in the scheme of things. So that worked. Dangling bird seed on like a string in front of them was totally the way to manipulate them. And Penelope, something that you said inspired me. So what you could do is give some of the candy that you already had to the guards of the army base, and they would eat so much candy that they would actually make themselves sick. And then that means that they uh, are just like too sick to actually take care of anything or, or to, to defend the base at all. So now you guys have busted in. And by you guys, I mean the squirrel and his army of thousands of birds. And you now are faced with the stockpile of the U.S. government's candy reserve. Are you guys going to eat it all there? I mean, what would you do if you finally got what you had always dreamed? Faced with what your heart desired. You know, you finally got what you wanted more than anything in the world. Do you think you would actually like it as much as you had thought? I mean, sometimes we're faced with the thing that we wanted, and it's not quite as great as we thought. You would eat all of it? Yeah. You would eat every single piece? And make myself sick until I had to go to bed for 100 years. <laughs> Can you guys help me out here? Can we pretend to just like scarf candy together? I I'm gonna, you know, just start. <laughs> help me out here, though. Help me out. Yes, yes. Ah, scarf it down. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And now, for the next hundred years, our friend the squirrel had a stomach ache. It was a stomach ache so bad that it kept him alive well past a normal squirrel's lifetime. 
It kept him alive in this suspended state of halfway between candy sick and headachey. And all he could do was think about the fact that he had imprisoned all those birds. And now the birds, they had been locked up for too long. They decided to strike out on their own. They decided to make a nation of birds to make sure that they could never be kidnapped again. And they elected as their chief that owl that Harv was so great at making the noise for. Uh, Harv, can you give us an owl one more time? The mighty owl is me. <laughs> uh, uh, so the, the mighty owl became the, uh, the, the head of the General Assembly of the United <laughs> Bird Nations. There's a pun here. What is it? The United <laughs> Avian Nations. The United Avian Shins. Ah, it's lost. Can anybody come up with a pun about United Nations and birds? Aviation. Aviation Nation. The Aviation Nation, yes. The, <laughs> the League of Aviations. A A Avians. Uh, it's, 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 there's, there's something there. <laughs> Avian Encounters. Avian Encounters. <laughs> I, I love that. That's perfect. Okay. So with that, in the end, the squirrel had done many things. Uh, he made himself sick, he'd stolen a strategic stockpile from the US government, but he'd also prompted some good in this world. Uh, he had ended up making it so that the birds became their own nation, and, and they became legally recognized by the United Nations, and they had their own League of Birds, and they had sovereignty now of the skies. They, that was where they lived. Um, <laughs> and all the airplanes had to pay a tax as they went into their, their lands now. Um, and that's how we are going to leave things with this story, I think. So now, I'm going to go ahead and, and add the end to the end of this. <laughs> the end. And guys, what would you call... <laughs> now, this story is, of course, three sentences long, but you all know that it's actually much, much longer. What is the story? I know the way of the story. I know the name. Um, it's um, Hey, I know the way of the story. Super long, but only three sentences um, bird, bird, and squirrel story. And then they had a disco party. How about the League of Extraordinary <laughs> Avians? Ooh. What was that? I didn't hear that. Can you give that to me again, Harv? The League of Extraordinary Avians. Oh! <laughs> I, we gotta go with that, guys, I think. There's just no way. Uh, I mean, it's a little tacky. <laughs> But <laughs> yeah. got me. <laughs> oh, oh, jeez. Rainbow <laughs> mustache of extra ordinary avians. <laughs> nice, wonderful guys. Oh yes, we got to see what Cecilia made. <laughs> Rainbow mustache. Guys, look at this. <laughs> Whoa. Looks just like Sean Connery if he was a bird. <laughs> Rainbow mustache. Rainbow. That's fantastic. <laughs> Look at that mighty owl. <laughs> I have a rainbow mustache. No doubt. <laughs> Now, friends, before I leave, I want to do one more thing before we have a disco party and head out. Do you guys want to answer a riddle? Whiskey. Cool. You're here. And we don't need to do the chat thing. So if you know the answer to the riddle, just get it out. You guys ready? As chilling as snow, as tasty as cake. Skipping the waffle cones, a rookie mistake. Chocolate's good, but it's not such an ice cream. On a hot summer's day, we cry for... Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. No, no, you, you guys... Mojitos. Hot dogs. Hot dogs, right? Hot dogs, yeah. <laughs> Chocolate's good, but it's not such a nice dream. On a hot summer's day, we cry for bananas! <laughs> Banana ice cream. Banana flavored ice cream. Sounds disgusting, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> you guys ever had banana flavored ice cream before? Yes, yeah. it's fantastic. No, no, never. No. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we've made an incredible story. We've learned a lot. And maybe in the end, the candy that that squirrel was trying to steal was the friends he made along the way. And all those birds were really just trying to find their place in the world. In the end, he was able to give that to them. They, they made their home in the sky. <laughs> That's a little tacky. I think. A little tacky. Oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs>
I'm the one that has tacky on my forehead, so I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Real sovereignty was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Birds of a feather. <laughs> yeah, that would have been, that that been, been a great fun. title, but not as great as mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. This is just facts. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I want to tell you real quick that uh, if you liked what you saw here today, you can go to drsparks.com to be part of a future episode. Uh, we do this every single day of the week at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, although not next week because we're going to be taking off. And also while you're at drsparks.com, you can become a Patreon subscriber or throw a tip our way. Both things that would be really great if you like the work we do and would like to see. Say next my rainbow mustache. Oh, let me see your rainbow mustache. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is spectacular. I also want to thank Family Maker Camp for letting us throw this little shindig here today and put all of our crazy uh, different programs together under one roof. And also to thank our incredible producer, Matt Chilbert, whose idea this was. The Anything Place is his baby, and it's a beautiful baby. And we all love to hear it laugh and to cry and do all the things that babies do. <laughs> Guys, this has been so fun. You came up with an incredible story, and I loved being able to share it with you. But now... We got to have that disco party. That disco party that we all disco ready Bobby, for. Boobie, 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 boobie. Can we do some disco? Boobie, boobie. Take a second, I think, but let's, uh, <laughs> you guys ready? Can we shake it out a little bit here? Let's, uh, let's try to, um, strip, stand disco up and party. guys. Stretch for me. Oh, I'm stretching. Oh, you can see I got my stretch in here. I'm going to take down this, this owl. He's going to dance with me. Disco owl. You ready, disco owl? Are you a disco owl? It's uh, Disco Therapy is the name of the song. It's by Luke Metzler, who's a good friend of mine. I know his dad very well. He's a very talented uh, musician out of L.A. <laughs> All right, here we go. You guys ready? Well, where's the disco ball? Yeah, I want to live in a world where narwhals get hot dogs. Now I have rainbow eyebrows. Hey, Mike, break it down, Mike! Eyebrows. <laughs> Henry's got the eyebrow dance going on. Love it. Eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs>